one. So remember the duration of uh, the paper is two hours. And remember, before you can kickstart in answering any, any question, you should always make sure that you go through a set of uh, instructions and information in that particular paper. So now, uh, if uh, we throw our eyes on this um, screen, we see that uh, we have um, the instructions there. Uh, that runs from one up until up until eight. So now remember, grade twelve in each and every question paper, regardless of uh, paper one or paper two, uh, you always um, chase for one hundred and fifty marks. And um, we have set three sections uh, for each and every paper. So now we have section A. In most cases, this section A it is compulsory. Uh, it uh, carries thirty marks, and we also have section B. Section B uh, comprises of uh, three questions, of which the expectation is to select only uh, two questions that you feel comfortable with. Right. So now moving on to section C. Section C, in most cases, uh, you are given uh, two questions, and the expectation is to choose only one question. Okay. So now let's check the, the allocation of marks uh, per section. So now section A, uh, you fight for 30 marks, and section B, each question carries 40 marks. So all in all, under section B, you buy, be fighting for 80 marks. So now, then the last section, uh, which is section uh, C, each uh, question carries uh, 40 marks, of which the expectation is only to select um, one question. So now, if you add uh, all of them, then they will sum up to 150. So now, grade 12, so bear in mind that um, uh, following uh, the instructions or the information, it is part of the examination. So make sure that you make it a norm or you make it a culture to always follow the given set of instructions. Because the moment you, you fail to follow the instructions, then you have actually failed before you can uh, start your uh, paper or the examination. Okay, right. So now let's check um, question one. Let's check question one. Question one under section A. So now, uh, we have 30 marks, and the time allocated to go through this or to complete this section uh, is 20 minutes. And make sure that you run for that 20 minutes whenever you complete um, this uh, question. Because the moment you fail to go through uh, this question within the stipulated or given or scheduled time, in that regard, it means that you are going to uh, battle uh, to, to finish up um, the paper. Okay, right. So now, question one. In particular, 1.1, it reads as follows. Various options are provided as possible answers to the following questions. Choose the correct answer and write only the letter. In the bracket, you've actually been shown uh, as an example that uh, the options that will be given, uh, will be given option A, B, C, up to, up to D. So now, also, if you check there, you are given uh, an example on how to answer this section in a perfect manner. Okay, right. So now let's start the work now. 1.1.1. It reads as follows. Which of the following is a real flow in the product market? So now remember, grade 12, before you can actually uh, jump onto answers, you should always make sure that you understand the key concepts given in a, in a question. Also, you must check the action verbs that have been used in that particular question. So now if we check this um, question, we have real flow as well as the uh, product market. Okay, so now if you still remember the real flow and the product market, if you, you draw a bigger picture, this uh, concept, they fall under the circular flow model. What is this circular flow model? Then we shall discuss that um, as time lapses. So now let's check the real flow. And also, let's check the product market. When we talk of a word market, a word market is a platform where goods and services are being bought and sold. Why are we saying that a word market is a platform? Because a transactions can either be performed physically or electronically. So now that is why we're actually saying that um, a market is a platform. Okay, right. So now let's check uh, the product market. We have different set of uh, market or different types of market. If time allows, I'll actually go through them. But for now, since we don't have um, enough time, let's quickly uh, focus on the, on the type of the market that we're actually faced uh, with. 
we have product market. So product market is a platform where buying and selling of goods and services uh, do take place. That is the product market. Here we check the goods and services that are actually uh, being bought and, and sold. So now, so in a, in a, when we talk of the, the real flow, we have two types of flows. We have money flow as well as the, the real flow. So now under real flow, we check uh, the flow of goods and services. We check the flow of goods and services as well as the flow of vectors of production. While under, uh, under um, money flow, we check uh, the flow of expenditures or expenses as well as uh, the flow of um, income. Okay, right. So now, great jobs. In order for you to master this um, a kind of questions, you should always make sure that you uh, apply uh, the method or the strategy that is best. And of all the strategies up to this far, that I think I can work best for you, great jobs, so as to attain or achieve the higher mark is uh, when you apply the strategy that we call elimination method. Okay, right. So now this elimination method, what do we, we do? You normally compare, compare the options given. And then the ones that you see that they are far from being correct, you cancel them out up until you are actually left with the one that you think uh, is uh, mostly correct. Okay, right. So now let's check option A. Option A, uh, we have the spending flow on goods and services from households to firms. It's out. So we cancel it, it's out. So now the second one, which is B, we have the flow of the vectors of production from household to firms. And then also this one is uh, totally out. So now let's check um, the next one, which is uh, uh, C, option C. Then it reads as follows. The income flow from firms to household through the vector market. Also this one uh, is out. So now it means that automatically we are now left with what? We've left with D. And that makes D our answer. The best answer is the flow of goods and services from firms to households. Remember I said that in order for you to master this, you should understand the concept. So now since the prudent market is the market uh, where, or is the platform where goods and services are being bought and sold. So in this regard, this calls for uh, D as the correct option uh, compared to other options. So now, great terms, bear in mind that most of these answers, they are pretty uh, close to one another. That is why you should always uh, take into account uh, the best strategy that you can actually apply so as to um, get to the correct answer. Okay, right, great terms. So now we are actually saying that the perfect answer in this regard is... Um, the perfect answer in this regard, we are saying that our perfect answer is um, D. Okay, so now we said that our appropriate answer is going to be uh, D. Okay, right. So now moving on to the uh, next question, which is 1.1.2. It reads um, as follows. The dash is caused by changes in the building and construction industry. So now, if you check um, the, the, the key concept in this uh, question, we have, uh, what, we have construction industry. And what is this industry? Industry here, we refer to a group of firms that sell the same product or group of firms that sell the same goods as well as um, services. So now if we check here, we have um, different set of what, uh, different set of or different types of business cycles. So now um, you should always understand the meaning of uh, that business cycles. And before, uh, before you can actually jump onto answers as well, you should always make sure that um, you know uh, the concept uh, when uh, you read uh, the question. Okay, right. So now uh, the appropriate answer for this one we have um, C. C is our appropriate answer. Guys, remember uh, the types of business cycles, they normally depend on the uh, number of years that um, the, the business or, or the, or the economic activities normally fluctuate. So now let me take you to these business cycles. What do we mean by word or a phrase business cycles? Business cycles, we refer to fluctuations of the economic activities. So now these economic activities, uh, we check uh, how long can they actually uh, fluctuate. So now in this regard, our appropriate answer is going to be C. 
Okay, right, grade 12. So now let's move on to the next question. The next question that we have in hand, we have 1.3. Uh, um, uh, so now 1.1.3 uh, reads as follows. The South African Reserve Bank uses DASH as an instrument to maintain uh, price stability. So it means that now the moment you are talking of the of uh, South African Reserve Bank, you should take into account um, that um, South African Bank it uses uh, which policy and under which policy, which instrument best uh, works for, uh, for 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 South African Reserve Bank so as to stimulate the flow of goods and and services. Guys, remember if you take into account most of the policies they are needed. Uh, because um, they, there will be a fluctuations of the uh, economic um, activities. So now once there are fluctuations of the economic activities, it's either the government uh, can come into play to stimulate using the policy that is we call fiscal policy and the instruments that they normally use there, they use taxation as well as the government spending. But now when it comes to South African Reserve Bank, we know that this is a reserve bank. And Reserve Bank normally uh, it uses um, uh, the policy that we call monetary policy, and this monetary policy uses um, uh, different set of instruments. And the instruments that uh, they normally use, they use money supply as well as the um, interest rate. So now remember, it will depend uh, whether the economy has landed at uh, growth or it has landed at boom. So now uh, that is why now they will check uh, which uh, instrument uh, should be. Uh, what are uh, much lessened and which instrument should actually uh, uh, be uh, mostly applied. Okay, right. So now, as I said earlier, that you should always make sure that uh, uh, you want to use the elimination method whenever you are answering the questions under business studies. So now, if we check um, the given set of options, A is out, B is correct, C is out, D is out. So now, our appropriate answer in this regard is going to be um, option B. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to the next option or the next question. The next question we have 1.1.4. 1.1.4 reads as follows. Uh, reserve assets are recorded in the dash. So now let's talk of the word assets and let's talk of uh, the word reserve. So now reserve, it means that you actually put aside, you don't actually use that assets at a moment. So now what do we mean by the assets? When you talk of the assets, we refer to possessions of the economy or possessions of the uh, business. So now remember these assets, they can either be the assets of a long term as well as the assets of a short term. So now the assets of a long term, in this regard, it can actually involve um, machinery, it can involve fitting and um, machinery as well, and as well as um, the buildings, uh, the motor vehicles, and the likes. So now when it comes to the current ones, meaning the current ones are they are the assets that can be possessed or that can be owned within a, a short period of time. So now these assets that we call them current, it means that we can actually say that uh, debtors, we call them what we call them um, the current assets. Because when you ref we refer to debtors, we refer to those are people who normally uh, owe the business, even though they owe us. They haven't paid the business. That money belongs to the business. They can pay that money within any 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 short uh, period of time. So now, um, uh, great talks. Remember when we talk of um, uh, uh, what when we talk of the recording, we record. What do we record actually? We record the transactions. So now these transactions, uh, we check the transactions that are international, meaning we check um, uh, the flow of goods and services uh, between the countries. Which is a what? Which is a, which can actually be uh, classified as a bilateral trade. So now also we can actually record the transactions that take place amongst different set of uh, countries. And in that regard, that particular type type of trade we call it multilateral trade. Okay, right. So now the recording here of the reserve assets um, they can actually be recorded under financial account. Yes. And then we check B current account. No. Then we check C, capital transfer account, no. Then we check D, gold account, no. So now it means that this one of um, financial account is the one that is um, appropriate. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to 1.1.5. 1.1.5 reads as follows. The value of goods and services produced by a country during a financial year. During a financial year is known as dash um, income. So now if we check 
if we check uh, the, the options given, member Kritovs, I always tell you that uh, you should always apply uh, elimination method or elimination strategy uh, whenever you are dealing with um, uh, the questions uh, that are uh, in a multiple choice form. Okay, right. So now if we check here, domestic income, domestic income uh, uh, is totally out, money income is totally out, but the correct option is um, national income because also the government uh, is uh, totally out. So great talks, remember I told you that this um, uh, options given in most cases, they're pretty uh, similar or pretty close to one another. And you should always make sure that you are careful whenever uh, you attempt them. Okay, right. So now let's move on to uh, the next question. And this next question we have um, 1.1.6. Uh, 1 so now 1.1.6 1 reads as follows. Which of the following is the responsibility of the local government? So now local government. What do we mean by local government? And why, why in actually do we have local government? It means if you have local government, we still have other types of the, of the government. And what do we mean by a word, government? When you talk of the government, we normally refer to bodies uh, that uh, uh, provide uh, the economy with public um, goods. Remember, public goods, in most cases, they don't have a price. They are free. They are free goods. In most cases, they are free goods, um, unlike um, economic goods where they normally have a price on them. So now let's check a different classification of the government. We have um, national government. National government is, is where now we refer to those uh, guys in the parliament. And also we have uh, the provincial government. Provincial government is where now we can uh, refer to MECs. And uh, also, uh, lastly, we have the local government. This one of local government takes into account the municipal it is okay right so now great twelves let's check out uh, the options given the first option given we have street lights that one is the correct one then we have education education is far and then we have army army is far then we, can, we have car license car license is far so it means that now in this regard our correct answer it is um going to be a okay now moving on to uh, the next question, which is 1.1.7, 1.1.7 um, reads as follows. An increase in taxes will cause a decrease in debt. What do we mean by a tax? When we talk of a tax, we talk of a levy or a charge that uh, the government normally apply on uh, uh, individual income or on business um, income, or uh, they normally uh, charge or it's a levy on um, the investment uh, that um, actually into, into place. Okay, right. So now let's check um, the options uh, given. Okay, remember before we can actually go to the options given, this uh, text, we have different classification of text. So now this text, uh, if we have uh, what we have income tax. Income tax is the levy on what on uh, individual income and also individual income, and we also have what we also have um, company tax. And this company tax, it is actually a levy on business uh, profits. Okay, right. So now, also we should be in, in position to know the, 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 the type of tax that is actually being applicable or used here in South Africa. Here in South Africa, the type of tax that they use, they use what you call progressive tax. So now this progressive tax, um, uh, it, it says what? Uh, it says the more you yen, the more you are taxed, or the lesser you gain, uh, the lesser you are taxed. So now remember, the major essence of the government to apply tax, because from the start I said that the government, in order for them to stimulate the flow of goods and services, they apply what you call a fiscal policy. And this fiscal policy, uh, it contains two instruments. One is what? One is taxes or taxation, and the other one is government um, uh, spending. So now, uh, these taxes, the government apply them whenever they want to stimulate uh, the flow of goods and, and services. So now, right, great tops. So now if we check them, they are seeing that an increase in taxes will cause a decrease in this tax collection is out. Consumption, yes. Consumption, yes. It is correct. So now see government revenues out and governmental expenditures out. Why are we saying that? an increase in taxes will cause a decrease in consumption. It is because the moment the government uh, increases uh, the percentage of the tax on the, what, on the individual income, 
that is going to discourage the the what the production of goods and services meaning uh these individuals they are going to be discouraged to undertake work or to render services why because now they will actually be what sweating for for nothing they will sweat too much after sweating too much much of their monies or much of their income now is going to be taken by the government but it is the good word it is the good strategy for the government to do that but it is not advisable for the government always to uh, to put a, too much levy on what on uh individual individual income so let's check why is it so important for the government always to charge uh, this tax it is so important because tax normally it helps to what uh, to redistribute income from those who have a lot of uh, uh, wealth or, or, or money uh, towards um, those who are who are poor or those who don't have. So in this regard, it means that the government will tax those people who are having a lot of money or a lot of assets or those people who are wealthy, and then they are going to give to what uh, to the poor. How do they give to the poor? In most cases, they give to the poor uh, via what via uh, capital transfer. Uh, so now this one of uh, capital transfer. Uh, or social grants. Here we refer to social grants because remember, whenever we talk of a grant, a grant is the money that you receive without any 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 job being done or any service actually being rendered. Okay, right. So now, as we said, grade twelve, the appropriate answer for this section is going to be is going to be B. Okay. Yes, I would love to go deeper or go more under this concept, but for the sake of time, grade twelve, um, we shall discuss it as time lapses. Okay, right. So now moving on to the next question, we have 1.1.8. 1 .1 so now 1.1.8 1 .1 grade 12 reads as follows. Changes in, in terms of trade signal changes in the countries. So now let's check the terms of trade. What is this terms of trade? Terms of trade normally calls for what you call international trade. It means that here, there is a flow or there are flows of goods and services between, uh, between countries or amongst uh, the countries. So now if we check here, we have A, which is prices, is out. We have inflation, is out. We have wealth, is out. But we have welfare. So in this regard, welfare, it is our appropriate answer for this um, question. Okay, right, grade 12. So now let's move on to the next question, grade 12. The next question that we are moving to we are moving to 1.2. Uh, so now 1.2 reads as follows. Choose a description from column B that matches the item in column A. Write only a letter uh, in brackets. Actually give an example how you can best uh, approach this uh, particular type of questions. So now, grade 12, if you check this type of questions, they are somehow very tricky. Even though they might look um, easy into your eyes, but in actual fact, they are not that much um, easy. Okay, right. So now um, let's check um, uh, the concept under column A. Column A, in most cases, you are given the concept. Uh, while in column B, in most cases, you can be given the features, the characteristics, or, or the definitions, or the explanations, and um, the likes. So it means that you should be in the position to understand the concept deeply. Because the moment you don't understand the concept deeply, in that regard, it is going to, add, it is going to show you flames. Okay, right. So now let's check 1.2.1. Uh, so we have Keynesian approach. So now, who is this Keynesian? This, this Keynesian, Keynesian is the name of a person. And why are we saying the approach? It means it is his understanding towards um, the economics. Because uh, Kratos, uh, we have different set of um, theories under economics. It means that um, um, we have different uh, views when we... We, we, we deal with economics. That is why our founder of economics, uh, our father, which is Adam Smith, um, this father uh, for us, him as well, uh, he does um, uh, tolerate what? Tolerate different set of approaches. Remember, Keynesian did approach uh, or did um, give out his side of um, view or the story when it comes to the fluctuations of economic um, activities. So he is saying that if you want to avoid the fluctuations of economic activities, the market forces of demand and supply will make the economy to stabilize. We don't need the government. We don't need the government. And according to his approach, he's saying that in most cases, governments have the same what? Have the same, same name, which is corruption. So that is why he's saying that no. 
whether uh, the economy is at boom or the economy is at draws. Meaning when the economy is at boom, it means that the economic activities are doing very, very well. There is full employment. Many of the resources are being used. There's no, uh, what, there's no waste of resources. Meaning there is efficiency or resources actually are being used um, efficiently. So now this guy can is saying that, no, we don't need government to step in when it comes to uh, the flow of goods and services or when it comes to uh, the performance of the economic activities. So now, um, if we check uh, the appropriate answer for this that is in line with um, uh, Mr. Kinison's approach is E. That says, a school of thought which believes the economy is best controlled by market forces. Which market forces? These market forces that we are referring to, we are referring to uh, the level of demand and supply. What is demand and what is supply? When you talk of demand, we talk of the willingness and ability to buy goods and services. Then uh, when it comes to supply, supply we refer to what? We refer to um, the ability and willingness of businesses to sell goods and services. So meaning our appropriate answer in this regard, it is going to be A, meaning E here is our appropriate answer. Okay, right. <clears throat> so now guys, uh, let's check um, our, our 1.2.2, the amplitude. So now what, what do we mean by, by, by this um, amplitude? When we talk of the amplitude, remember the amplitude, it does uh, measure what it does measure the distance uh, from trough to trough and peak to peak. So now uh, we must check um, the appropriate answer uh, that uh, is in line with with that. This is just a measure. It is a measure. It's a tool that uh, is actually being applied whenever they measure the flow of goods and services, or whenever they measure uh, they measure actually um, the performance of the economic activities. So in this regard, our appropriate answer is going to be D. It measures the severity of the uh, cyclical uh, fluctuations. So in this regard, it means that our appropriate answer is going to be, our appropriate answer is going to be um, D. Okay, right. So now moving on to the next question, we have boom. What is this boom? Boom is a turning point of the business cycle. And this turning point of the business cycle, it does indicate that economic activities are performing very well. They are, there is no wastage of resources. Resources are efficiently being utilized or resources are efficiently have been actually uh, used. So now this, it means that in that particular economy, if um, the economy, economic activities are at boom, that is the indication that there is full employment, full employment of resources. People are working. Businesses are making profit. The government is able uh, to collect enough tax. And then people also, they are able to buy goods and services because the purchasing power is allowing them to, what, to buy whatsoever they desire with um, the money that they actually earn. So now the economic activities, they are not limited to what I actually mentioned. But for the sake of time, um, let me actually uh, move on. So now our appropriate answer in this regard, we have, um, we have C. So the C uh, that says uh, a period of a rapid economic expansion, we have, um, we have um, C. So meaning here, our appropriate answer is going to be C. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to the next question. The next question we have what? We have um, treasure bill, treasury, treasury uh, bills. So now what are these uh, treasury bills? Treasury bills, uh, normally we refer to what we refer to uh, short-term uh, debt obligations that are normally inconsistent with um, the central government or the national government. So I meaning in this regard, our appropriate answer, if we check there, it is what it is um, A, meaning A in this regard is our appropriate answer. Okay, great talk. Thanks. So now let's move on to uh, the next one, the next question. So now we have balance of uh, trade. So now the balance of trade here, what do we mean uh, by this um, uh, balance uh, of trade? So now the balance of trade that we are referring to, we check the, the difference in value between a country's imports and exports of goods and services. Meaning this balance of trade, it does what? It does uh, record the transaction uh, pertaining to imports as well as exports. What do we mean by imports and what do you mean by exports? When we talk of the imports, we refer to goods and services that have been bought from other countries by local firms or local businesses or our local government. 
Then when it comes to the exports, exports, we refer to goods and services that are locally produced and actually being sold to the rest of the, of the world. So now in this regard, our appropriate answer is going to be, is going to be H. Okay, right, grade 12. Thank you very much uh, for understanding and listening uh, and taking me up to this far. Okay, right. So now let's move on to 1.2.6. Uh, 1.2.6 reads as follows. Current prices. What are these um, uh, current prices? So now when we talk of the current prices, in most cases, we check the actual values of goods and, um, and services. We check the current. What is this current? That's what we check. We check the actual one, the actual values of goods and um, uh, services. So now let's check the appropriate answer for this. So now if we lay our eyes on, on that uh, column B, we have what? We have F as our appropriate answer. So meaning in this regard, F is our appropriate answer. Okay, right. So now let's move on to uh, 1.2.7. 1.2.7 uh, says non-extrudability. So non-extrudability this concept calls for what we call a public good. Remember, a public good, we said that a public good is a free good that can be used by anyone. And this public good that can be consumed by anyone. You can't, you can't exclude someone from using it. You can't stop someone from using it. That is why we are saying that there are non-excludability. Everyone can use the public good. Everyone can utilize a public good, whether you are a foreigner or you are a citizen. If there are parks there, you can't say that in this park, foreigners shouldn't come and sit in this park. No. Why? Because it's a public good. It's a free good that can be utilized by everyone. Now also let's check the tar roads. Tar roads also is a public good. So you can't say that the, the motor vehicle for foreigners shouldn't use a certain tar road. No. You can't exclude them. So also we can talk of the street lights. You can't say that uh, since you're a foreigner, when well, I shouldn't use these street lights. No, you can't exclude them. And we have different set of what examples under uh, this public good. And then uh, you can't exclude uh, someone uh, from using or utilizing such um, uh, such uh, commodities. Why? Because they are public ones. They are free. They don't have a price, just like economic um, goods. So now in this regard, our um, Appropriate answer, if you check our appropriate answer, our appropriate answer is I. I, it is almost impossible to prohibit any person from using the gold. So meaning in this regard, our appropriate answer is going to be, is going to be I. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to the next question. The next question have 1.2.8 that um, addresses the issue of globalization. What do you mean by globalization? Globalization is a linkage of what? It's a linkage of different set of countries uh, coming together to perform a certain activity. And make an example of this. Uh, different set of uh, countries can come together to, uh, to celebrate uh, World AIDS Day. World AIDS Day, then the moment they come together, then uh, that activity, we call it what? We call it um, globalization. Also, if they come to play Olympic Games, uh, then also in that regard, we call it globalization. And also, if uh, we have our Soccer World Cup, also Soccer World Cup can be classified as an activity that calls for globalization. So now let's check um, the appropriate answer for our 1.2.8. Our appropriate answer is G. That is as follows, increasing uh, integration of economies around the world. So meaning here, in this regard, our appropriate answer is going to be uh, G. Okay, right, great talks. So now we are done with this uh, question. Let's move on to uh, the next question. So now the next question, uh, we, we are moving on to 1.3. Um, 1.3 of all questions, it is somehow very tricky. How, why are we saying 1.3 somehow it is very tricky? It is very tricky because it needs you to understand the content of economics. It needs you to have uh, the content of economics. If you are used, you are used to memorizing concepts, when it comes to this question, it is not easy to master all of all of them uh, if uh, you are not well equipped um, with um, uh, the concepts. Okay, right. So now um, let's check um, the question. Give one term for each of the following descriptions. Write only the term next to the question number. Uh, an example is given there. So uh, we have 1.3.1 uh, to 1.3.6 in the answer book. 
So abbreviations, agronomies, and examples will not be accepted. So it means that what they are saying, uh, you shouldn't write GDP. GDP, if you write GDP, uh, I put a cross. I don't even uh, put a half. I put a cross. Why a cross? Because uh, it is specified amongst a set of instructions that um, you shouldn't um, uh, write abbreviations. But you rather say cross domestic um, a product. Okay, right. Great talks. So now let's move on to 1.3.1. 1.3.1 reads as follows. A reporting tool prescribed by the United Nations uh, for countries to compile cross domestic product figures. Uh, this calls for systems of uh, national accounts. Systems, systems of national account. Systems of national account. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to the next question, which is 1.3.2. 1.3.2 reads as follows. The type of business cycle where nominal GDP is adjusted for inflation. So now, if nominal GDP, it is adjusted for inflation, nominal, we check the current one. So the moment uh, inflation is being adjusted, it means that calls for the real what? The real GDP. So meaning in this regard, we are going to have a real, real business cycles. Real business cycle. Okay, right. So now, great terms. Let's move on to the next question. Is 1.3.3. 1.3.3 reads as follows. Payments by the government to suppliers that reuse their cost. Payments by the government to suppliers that reduce their costs. Mm, reduce their costs. Yes. So it means that this payment also it should benefit uh, consumers. It should benefit those who buy goods and services. And uh, if we call, if we check into account, uh, uh, the the business should always make sure that they minimize what they minimize the cost. And then the government can also chip in to say that, okay, guys, uh, since um, you are supposed to spend this much, but on behalf of consumers, let us pay this amount. So it means that this question calls for what we call a subsidy. What is a subsidy? A subsidy is a set of amount that the government pays to producers or suppliers or sellers of goods and services on behalf of the customers. So meaning in this regard, our appropriate answer is going to be sabo cities okay right i already explained uh, uh what is um the subsidies okay right great talks so now let's move on to the next question the next question we have 1.3.4 1.3.4 reads as follow the ability of the country to produce greater quantity of um, a good or service with the same quantity of inputs um per unit of um uh, time so now remember we have different set of uh, what uh we have absolute advantage comparative so in this regard our appropriate answer is going to be absolute advantage. Absorb load advantage. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to the next question. The next question says, uh, state-owned enterprises that um, uh, provide public goods and services. In most cases, state-owned, yeah, we refer to what? We refer to those um, uh, businesses where the government has some shares in them, where the government has some part of our uh, ownership in them. And in, in economic terms, such a businesses, we call them parastatals. Call them parastatals. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to the next question, which is 1.3.6. 1.3.6 reads as follows. The flow of income and expenditure between the participants in the economy, the flow of income uh, between uh, the participants in the economy. So now uh, the flow, remember, uh, I did explain, you know, it was it a question one, different set of flows. And I said that these flows normally, uh, there are two. We have what we have, real flow as well as the uh, what um, money flow. And I said under real flow, we check the flow of goods and services as well as the flow of vectors of production. And you also have what you call money flow. Money flow, we check the flow of what? So we check the flow of income as well as the flow of uh, expenditure or expenses. So now the appropriate answer for this question is going to be money flow. And remember, great tops, this money flow um, 
uh, it does what it does take the the insight whenever you are drawing your what your uh, secular flow model and the outside part of it uh, that's where now we gauge what we call the real flow so now as time lapses when we get to such question if any in this question paper then i will explain it um further okay right great talks so now in this regard we are done with our section and then you have seen how best you can answer these questions remember time uh, is always very important and you should always respect it. The time that is allocated in answering any set of questions, make sure that you utilize it. Okay, right, grade 12. So now let's move on to the next question, grade 12. So next question, grade 12, uh, we have section B. So section B, um, in, in, in section B, remember you are given uh, what you are given uh, two, uh, two, I mean, you are given three questions and the expectation is to select a two. So now, okay, so let's check um, what we have uh, in store. So we have 2.1. So 2.1 under question two says answer different questions. So now we have 2.1.1. So 2.1.1 reads as follows. Name two features of the expansionary phase in the in the business cycles. So now um, what do we mean by, by expansionary phase? So now guys, uh, and this expansionary phase, it means expansionary phase, now the economy is taking off from the trough it is now taking off from performing poor. The activity, economic activities have been performing poor. Now they are what? They are taking off from performing poor towards uh, performing better or towards um, uh, performing uh, towards um, the boom. Okay, right. Great talks. So now here what um, we know here, the features can be an increase in, B, in what? In GDP or gross um, domestic uh, product. Increase. Same that here. Increase in gross domestic product. What are these? What what do you mean by this gross domestic product? Now this is the second time coming across this uh, uh, phrase or this uh, abbreviation. Sorry. Um, what does it mean? It it means gross domestic product. Gross domestic product. We check what we check. Um. Uh, the total monetary value of goods and services that have been produced within borders of a certain country, then usually we check the time period of a uh, year. Okay, right. So now again, we can we can say what uh, we can also say we have an increase in spending. But if you check, the question says that we should only give um, one point, and of which that um, uh, one point um, it does what it does um, call for uh, for two months. So, so now let's check. So also here we can say that we have what? We have inflation increase. Inflation increase. Okay, right, great terms. What do you mean by inflation? And inflation, we refer to persistent or continuous increase in the general price level of goods and um, services. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to the next question. The next question reads as follow. Why is uh, uh, parliamentary uh, questioning on the main um, budget uh, import so important? It is so important because it helps improve um, government policies, uh, legislation, and public um, services. We are saying that this is important because it helps. It helps improve it helps to improve government policies or governmental policies government policies legislations and public services Okay, great talks. Thank you very much. Now let's move on to uh, the next question, which is question uh, 2.2. So question 2.2 um, reads um, as follows. Study the diagram below and answer the questions that follow. So this is an example of a circular flow model. So circular flow model, if you check under circular flow model, uh, we have um, we have what? We have um, vector market. Remember, I said the market is a platform where goods um, where, where goods and services are being bought and sold, that is a market. But now, when it comes to vector market, 
Vector market, it means now this is, is a platform where vectors of production are being bought and sold. Which vectors of production are we actually referring to? We are referring to capital, meaning here capital is being what? Being sold and bought. Also, we refer to entrepreneurship. Also, we refer to um, land. Also, we refer to, to labor. And also, we have the households. What do we mean by households? Households, we refer to one person or group of individuals who are sharing the same um, living arrangement. So now here we have product market. Product market, remember, it's a platform where goods and services are being bought and sold. So here we have the firms. What do we mean by firms? Firms, we refer to an entities that have, that, an entities that are uh, being established with the aim of um, making profit. So now uh, let's check um, the government. The government normally, uh, we refer to, we refer to, Bodies that normally provide with um, public good. Why am I saying bodies? Because the government comprises of different set of bodies. Under government, I know most of our uh, Ukraine talks, you think when you talk of the government, we only refer to politicians. Politicians, uh, they are one of the bodies that would form what you call the government. Meaning under government, number one, we have politicians. Number two, we have um, societies. We, have, we also have bureaucrats under, under government. They also take part as the government. But in most cases, because the politicians are the ones who are occupying the driver's seat of this vehicle or this um, government, we think that when we talk of the government, we refer to them. No, actually not. We have them set of bodies. Okay, let's check great talk. So now we have financial institutions. <clears throat> financial institutions that we refer to, we refer to those um, institutions that are actually uh, uh, credit um, providers. So these ones, they are those ones who are dealing with money these are the businesses um uh, or institutions that deal with um money such as banks and um uh, the likes the insurances and um the like okay right so now great talks um let's as i said earlier that um when when we talk of this um when we talk of um, of, of of this um uh, 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 what uh, secular flow model and then i said the outside part represent the real flow while the inside part the inside part um, represent what it represent um, the money flow. So now here, remember, uh, we are saying that the households they are the primary what they are the primary uh, participants under the secular flow model because they are the ones normally who are selling what who are selling um, uh, the vectors of production to businesses. So now businesses can be in the position to produce goods and and services. So whenever the households sell their vectors of production to businesses, uh, businesses then in that regard. They are going to what? They are going to reward or compensate the households with an income. Okay, right. So now let's um, move on. Uh, great talks. So great talks. Uh, moving on, we have two point two point one. So now two point two point one reads as follows: Identify the participant that uses the vectors of production to produce goods and services. Great talks. Remember, I said that whenever you are dealing with the questions under economics or under any 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 paper. It, it can be economics, it can be business studies and the likes. Make sure when the question says identify, this action verb should be taken into account. The moment it says identify, the expectation is just to pick the answer from the given set of uh, diagram or to pick the answer from the given set of uh, cartoon or to pick the answer from the given set of a uh, scenario. So in this regard, our appropriate answer is going to be firms. Okay, right. So now let's move on to the next question. The next question, we have 2.2.2. So now 2.2.2 reads as follows. Uh, through which market uh, will goods and um, payment for goods and services uh, do flow? They do flow under that we, what we call the product market. Remember, I've already explained uh, this um, product market. I said product market is a market where goods and services are being bought and sold. Okay, right. So now let's uh, move on to the next question, which is um, uh, 2.2.3. Briefly describe the term goods market. So now goods market, remember goods market uh, is more or less the same with the product market. So meaning here under goods market, we specifically refer to what? Refer to those tangible items that businesses are selling. So now here we talk of the platform where buyers and sellers of goods meet for potential transactions. So we here, uh, we're actually saying that uh, this is a platform, a platform, platform where buyers 
and sellers of goods meet for potential transactions. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to the next question. The next question we have um, uh, 2.2.4. 2 and our 2.2.4 reads as follows. How does the government reuse economic activities in the circular flow? So remember, these economic activities and the economics, I told you that we check the, the level of employment, we also check if businesses are making profit, we also check the performance of the uh, what imports, also check the performance of the exports, also check the level of consumption by the household, are they able to buy goods and services, are they not poor, are they poor, and um, the likes. Also check the different set of investments, either it can be local investment or foreign investment. So those are the economic activities that you're actually referring to. So what about the circular flow? The circular flow, we check the flow of income, we also check the flow of what? Expenditures, we also check um, the flow of production. That is actually taking place amongst uh, the different set of market um, participants or decision makers. Okay, right. So now in this regard, um, the question wants us to, to, what, to check or take into account how the government reuse economic activities in the circular flow model. So in this regard, um, the government normally, um, they put what you call uh, the surplus that will lead to less spending in the economy. So now here we're saying that uh, the government, the government budget, surplus, that will lead to lose spending in the economy. In the economy. Okay, right, good talks. So now at this uh, Janja, uh, we have actually pushed so now let's move on to 2.2.5. 2.2.5 uh, reads as follows. Explain the impact on the circular flow if leakages are greater than injections. What do we mean by leakages? When we talk of the leakages, we check uh, the goods and services or we check uh, the outflow of money, the outflow of money, the money that um, goes out of the, uh, the pool of collection. Then when you talk of the injections, we check um, the inflow of money or the money that comes into the economy. Okay, right. So now um, the question says what uh, we want um, to give the impact. So now if the question says impact, let's remember we can either uh, take into account the bad side or the, the good side. So now here the max allocation is four. It means that uh, the expectation is to come up with two points. So now leakages reduce the flow of income in an economy. Why are we saying that? Because when you talk of the leakages, we refer to uh, the flow of money uh, that is going out of the economy. Meaning leakages, we refer to what? Outflow of money. That is why we are saying that leakages reduce the flow of income in an economy. Leakages... Leakages reduce the flow of income in an economy. Okay, right. So now since we have our four marks, the expectation is to come up with um, how many marks, how many points. Two points. So now, also, we can say there will be less funds available for economic, economic activities, which um, leads to national income decreasing. What do you mean by national income? That is an income for the country. So now we are saying that there will be, there will be less funds 
available for economic activities which leads to national income decrease. Okay, great talk. So now we are done with um, <clears throat> 2.5. So now let's move on to the next question. And the next question that we are faced with, we are faced with um, uh, question 2.3. Um, uh, oh, so now question 2.3, I love it with all my heart because um, it addresses um, the issue of what we call Forex. So study um, the graph below and answer the questions uh, that um, follow. So now guys, remember, you, you should be in the position to understand the graph. You should, the, the language should always be clear. So now in this regard, when we talk of the exchange rate, exchange rate, we check uh, what we check the matching of different set of uh, currencies. So now in this regard, it means that now uh, a rent is actually being merged with a, with a dollar. So now if a rent is being merged with a dollar, uh, then uh, we can actually uh, read and understand uh, the questions um, that follow. So now if we check, um, uh, we have uh, what we have um, a different set of diagrams there or different set of caves. So now this cave, this one that is um, upward sloping, it's a supply cave. And why is the supply cave upward sloping? The supply cave is upward sloping, sloping because it obeys the law of supply. What does the law of supply uh, state? The law of supply states that um, the higher the price and then also uh, the higher the quantity. That's the law of um, supply. But now uh, this diagram, I mean, or this graph that is facing down, we call it demand cave. And then the demand cave uh, is downward sloping. Why is it downward sloping? Because there is uh, what an inverse relationship between uh, demand and uh, the price. So meaning here, uh, if the prices uh, of goods and services or the prices of a dollar is, is high, then it means um, uh, the quantity is going to be low. But if the price is low, then uh, the quantity is going to be high, unlike the supply. The supply, if the price is high, also the quantity is going to be very high according to the law. Okay, okay, right. Surely, Great 12, you did understand me very well when I was addressing these laws because I know most of you, Great 12, uh, you, you, you normally miss a point because you don't understand how this um, uh, concept normally uh, uh, flow or operate. So I said that the supply curve is upward sloping because it does obey uh, the what? The law of supply and the law of supply states that there is a positive relationship between the price and the quantity. The, the if the price is high, also the quantity is going to be high. Then reverses the case. But now when it comes to a uh, demand curve, demand curve is down and sloping because it obeys the law of demand. What does the law of demand says? The law of demand says that um, uh, there is an inverse or negative relationship between the price as well as the quantity. If the price is high, then the quantity is going to be low. Then if the price is low, then the quantity is going to be high. So that is why uh, we actually uh, see the graphs um, behaving the way they behave. So now if we check the demand curve, we have uh, D, which is the first demand curve, and the second demand curve, we have D1. So it means they say, what? There is a rightward shift, meaning demand, has, demand curve has shifted from D to D1. There should be a reason for a demand curve to shift. What, what can be the influence? There are different set of influences that can make um, the demand curve um, to shift. Okay, right. So now uh, let's check the first question that goes, uh, which is uh, 2.3.1. Name one exchange rate um, system. Remember, guys, we know uh, we have uh, different uh, types of um, exchange um, rate system. We have the exchange rate system where it is actually being managed, meaning we have managed exchange rate system. We also have what? Fixed uh, floating, uh, I mean free floating exchange rate system. We also have fixed managed um, exchange rate um, system. Okay, right. So now we're actually saying that um, uh, we have one. So now one we can just select from the three that I gave. So we can just say, okay, let's take what? Let's take managed. Managed exchange rate 
system. So, okay, right, great 12. Remember I said we have, um, we have three types here. We have managed exchange rate system. We have free floating exchange rate system. We also have fixed managed exchange rate system. Okay, right. So now, great 12, let's move on to the next question. The next question reads as follow. 2.3.2. Give one reason for the shift of the demand curve above. Demand curve can, can shift because there is an increase in terms of payments uh, from uh, imports of goods uh, from the United States of America. Also, it can shift because there is an increase uh, for payments uh, when it comes to services uh, from the United States of America. Also, you can actually say that uh, there is increased uh, spending of South Africa tourists in the United States of um, America. And also, you can actually say that South Africans uh, buying shares in the United States of um, America actually increase. Okay, right. So now, since we have um, one point here, uh, we can just uh, say that um, we have increased increased payments for services from the United States of America. Why United States of America? Because a dollar, in most cases, it does um, come from or belong to uh, the United States of America. Is this a currency for the United States of America? So now, why are we saying South Africa? It is because a rent also is a currency for uh, South Africa. Okay, right. So now, let's move on to the next question that reads 2.3.3. Uh, briefly describe the term foreign exchange. Foreign exchange is the conversion of one currency or one uh, country's currency into another. So now we are saying that um, this is um, the conversion, saying that this is nothing but the conversion. This is the conversion conversion of one currency of one country's currency into another. Okay, great job. So now we are done with this uh, question. Let's move on to the next one, which is 2.3.4. Explain the value of the rent against the dollar after shift in the demand curve in the graph um, above. So now, if we check the graph above, we should uh, we should um, uh, check the graph above. The question says that um, we must what explain the value of the rent against the value uh, of the dollar after the shift in the in the um, in the graph um, above. So if we check there, we have the rent, and the rent has actually decreased in the value against the dollar, and also the rent has depreciated against the, the dollar. So in this regard, we are saying that um, we have what. We have the rent has decreased in value against the dollar. Against the dollar. Let's check. So now here we have what? We have um, rent and then we have rent here. It means now rent is going, it's now weak. It's now weak. It needs, we need more of the rents now to buy a dollar. That is why we are saying that a rent has what? A rent has um, actually depreciated. Because now if we used to buy uh, $1 with um, 15 rand 20 cents, then now, after the shift, we are now forced to buy it with um, 1550. It means that now rent is weak. We need more of the rents to buy one dollar. That's what it means. Okay, right, great jobs. So now let's move on to the next question. The next question we have what? The next question we have um, uh, 2.3.5. 2.3.5 reads as follows How can an, an appreciation of a currency be negative to a country? What do we mean by appreciation? 
Appreciation is when uh, a currency uh, gain value or become more stronger compared to other um, currency. So now uh, let's check uh, the points. We are expected to give them um, uh, two points. So it means that currency appreciation may increase export expenses. And also, this situation can drastically cause a country's um, gross domestic product to actually decrease. So now we are saying that um, here, we are saying that um, the currency appreciation The currency appreciation may increase export expenses. And also, we said that this situation. can drastically drastically cause a country's GDP to decrease. Okay, right. Great house. Okay, right, great talks. So now uh, let's move on to uh, what long, long questions. We have what we have um, uh, question, uh, question um, 2.4. 2.4 uh, says briefly discuss the trend line and extrapolation as features used in the forecasting of the a business cycle. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's check here. What do we mean by, by, by the trend line? What do we mean by extrapolation? What do we mean by forecasting? Hey, forecasting is when um, we predict about um, the future. We predict about future, future economic activities. We predict, we check how uh, future uh, activities are going to behave. Okay, so now uh, we check of the extrapolation. So now, what, what, what do we mean by extrapolation? Extrapolation is when now this prediction it is used uh, based on what? Based on the historical uh, data. So now we also have um, the trend line, and where the trend line normally uh, indicate the general direction of um, the economy. Okay, right. So now we are saying that um, uh, the trend line, the trend line, Trend line indicate it does indicate a general <coughs> direction of the country's economy. And also the trend line, most countries have a positive slope over, over time, indicating A growing economy. Okay, great talks. So now let's move on to extrapolation. Extra extrapolation. Remember, we said that extrapolation means to estimate. Future events from history data or 
known that term. Oh, you're right. And also, this extrapolation plays a role. Role. Players use extrapolation to make predictions about the economy that are based on data and not opinion. Okay, right. So at, at, at this standard grade toes, now we have answered the question uh, regarding the extrapolation as well as the trend line. Okay, right. So another another thing, this uh, trend line in most cases, uh, it, it does uh, measure uh, the long-term um, uh, economic uh, growth. What do you mean by economic growth? Economic growth, we check the improvement uh, of businesses in terms of production of goods and uh, services. Okay, right. So now let's move on to 2.5 grade 12. It reads as follows. How can efficiency of inputs be used in the supply side policies so as to improve uh, the economy? What do you mean by efficiency under economics? Under economics, when you talk of efficiency, uh, we check um, what um, the non-wastage of resources. Resources are fully employed. There's no waste of um, resources. So the inputs that you are referring to in this regard, we are referring to the vectors of production. Because now, vectors of production, they are called vectors of production because those are the inputs that are necessarily needed by businesses so as to produce goods and services. Okay, right. So it means that uh, vectors of production, they are the core engine of um, businesses because without vectors of production, no processing of goods or manufacturing of goods and services can actually uh, take place. Okay, right. So now uh, let's um, uh, read and continue. So now we are saying that uh, how can efficiency of inputs be used in the supply side policies to improve the um, economy? So now inputs refer to all the costs involved in the production of goods and services. So when inputs are used more efficiently, the production cost of the producers will decrease. And also when we check tests, must be fair for businesses to be encouraged to produce high levels of production. So as well, individuals become motivated to work when taxes are fair, which could lead to higher productivity levels. Productivity levels are uh, referred to individual production of goods and uh, services. Okay, right, great job. So now we're saying that um, the inputs Saying that inputs refer to all the costs involved in the <coughs> in the production. of goods and services. Okay, right. So now secondly, said that when inputs, remember these inputs, we refer to vectors of production. When inputs are used more efficiently, The production cost of the producers will decrease. Oh, you're right, great jobs. So now also we're saying that taxes must be fair. For businesses to 
to be encouraged. To produce higher levels of production. Also, we said that individual income motivated individual become motivated to work. Why? Because now the tax charge is, is low. When taxes are fair, meaning the live or the percentage is not that much, and which could lead to higher lead to higher lead to higher Productivity levels. Productivity levels. So you are saying that individual income motivated, I mean, individuals become motivated to work when taxes are fair, which could lead to higher productivity levels. So now, great um, 12 at this uh, juncture, <clears throat> we are actually done with. Our question, our question two. So now let's move on to uh, question what? Question, question um, of three. Let's move on to question, question three. Remember under these questions, the expectation is to always make sure that whenever you attempt this set of questions, you base yourself with the time allocated as well as the marks allocated. I know some of you guys, uh, what makes you sometimes to underperform is because um, in most cases, you pay less attention uh, towards um, uh, the allocation of marks as well as the time allocated um, to answer that particular set of questions. Okay, right. So now answer the following questions, which is um, under 3.1. So now let's check um, 3.1.1. Name any two sub accounts in financial financial account so now we have a net direct investment as well as um, the financial derivatives we have net direct investment as well as net Portfolio investment. Okay, right. So now let's move on to the next question. Next question we have um, 2.1 point, I mean 3.1.2. So now 3.1.2 reads as follows. How is national income determined in the four sector economy? In the four sector economy, we have um, four um, uh, markets and also have four market uh, participants or four uh, decision uh, makers. So now the national income is calculated by adding the contribution of each sector to national income. Um, also, it includes the consumption levels of households, investment spending of households, uh, government spending, uh, as well as net trade between countries or imports. So now in short here, we have what? In short, we have um, uh, national income. National income normally is equivalent to consumption by household plus investment by businesses uh, plus government spending as well as um, plus net exports. So now this is what we are actually 
referring to. So now we are saying that the national income, the national income is calculated by adding the contribution of Each sector to the national income. It includes it includes the consumption level by household. Consumption levels by households. Consumption level of households. And also investment spending. Of businesses. Also, government spending and trade, I mean, net trade, net trade between countries. Net trade with top of exports or imports versus exports. So in the mathematical notation, when we talk of the uh, what when we talk of the calculation of the national income, we say that y, which denotes national income, is equivalent or equal to consumption by the household plus investment by different set of businesses plus uh, government spending, plus uh, net exports. This is the mathematical uh, formula to calculate um, our national income. Okay, right. So now let's move on to the next question. We have uh, Philip Scave. Remember, Mr. Philip? Uh, Philip is the name of a person. And now this um, gentleman, uh, he, he is actually exercising his uh, understanding or well, his approach when it comes to uh, the inflation as well as um, um, unemployment. So he may addresses only the issue of um, inflation as well as unemployment. So he is saying that if the level of inflation is high, that is going to uh, cause a decrease in the level of unemployment. That is why when you check the graph here, the more we have higher uh, numbers of inflation, then the unemployment is going to be very low. That is his approach. And also he's saying that the moment we have um, a lesser or lower inflation, then that one on its own, it is going to call for higher unemployment. So now that is his approach uh, when it comes to the inflation as well as unemployment. Okay, right. So now let's check out 3.2.1, uh, uh, what um, it does in, have in store for us. What is uh, the natural rate of um Unemployment according to the graph above. So the natural rate of unemployment that we have, we have what? We have eleven um, percent. So now this eleven percent is the natural uh what natural rate of unemployment. Okay, right, great twelve. So meaning here, our answer here is going to be eleven um percent. Remember, I did explain uh the meaning of a word inflation. I did say that whenever we talk of inflation. Inflation, we talk of the persistent increase or general increase um, in the price level or in the general price level of goods and um, services. So now when we talk of unemployment, unemployment, we refer to individuals uh, who have been looking uh, for a job for the past seven days. They have been looking for a job 
for the past seven days, and they form part of the uh, workforce. Remember, in South Africa, the workforce uh, normally starts from 16 uh, to 64. But now, if uh, you are just sitting there behind the shops, busy doing your stuff, you're not looking for uh, any particular job, and then you have qualifications, in that regard, you're not unemployed. You can't be classifying you as um, someone who is unemployed. Why? Because you, are not, you haven't been looking for a job. Okay, right. So now for the sake of time, grade 12s, let me move on to the next question. So now the next question we have what? The next question we have um, uh, 3.2. Point uh, 3.2.2 reads as follows. Name one supply side measure that can be applied to shift the demand curve. So now, uh, the one supply measure that we can actually refer to is that um, improved education. We have improved education. Improved education. Improved education. If your education is improved, then uh, the supply can actually uh what uh shift so now also we can check what skills training can also uh play part there if um uh, the individuals are being given that platform to enhance the level of skills that they possess also in that regard that is going to cause uh, the supply uh, cave to shift and also if you check um uh, what the skills development skill development in seminar also it can actually uh play what a crucial role in terms of um uh, shifting the supply cave Okay, right. So now let's move on to the next question. The next question raised 3.2.3. Briefly describe the term natural rate of unemployment. The natural rate of unemployment referred to the rate of unemployment that is merged with a state inflation rate. So now we're saying that uh, uh, this one we refer to what? We refer to the rate. The rate of unemployment. That is merged with a steady inflation rate. That is merged with a steady inflation inflation rate. Okay, right, Kratos. So now, Kratos, at this time now we have um, completed. Um, some few questions. Let's move on to 3.2.4. Um, uh, um, so 3.2.4 um, reads as follows. How would um, trade unions trade unions react if the flip curve moves from point A uh, to, point, um, to point B? How will they react? So trade unions in this regard, they will demand higher wages because the cost of living uh, has actually increased. What would have uh, pushed the cost of uh, living to, to increase uh, the inflation rate? Okay, right. So now we are saying that in this regard, uh, the trade unions, trade unions will demand. Remember I explained the word demand. Demand higher wages or higher pays. Higher wages because now the cost of living has increased. Why cost of living increased? Because now, because of the inflation, prices of goods and services, they have increased. So now if prices of, of goods and services have increased, even now, uh, whatsoever salary, whatsoever wage that uh, individuals earn also should increase. Why? Because if prices of goods and services have increased, that will leave uh, what the the what the, the the buyer or the customer uh, also to what to up his or game when it comes to the purchasing power. The purchasing power should also be at be high so that they can keep up with what can keep up with um, the prices of goods and and services. Okay, right. So now let's move on to uh, three point three point uh, two point five. Three point two point five reads as follows. How can provision of infrastructural services by government reduce the cost of doing business? So in this regard, the government provides funding for infrastructure. For example, you have roads, uh, traffic lights, railways, and the, and the likes. Also, if this infrastructure is not reliable or maintained, it becomes difficult for businesses to achieve higher productivity rates. Why? Because now, for them to go and buy or transport 
their supply, to transport their goods and services, it is going to be easy. It is not going to be easy. Remember, uh, for businesses to be able to process goods and services, they should always buy their inputs. So now to buy the inputs, sometimes they need to, to travel or use transportation. So now if the, the roads or the railways are not fine, it means that that is going to pose a challenge for businesses to actually be in the position to meet up with their suppliers so as they, to be able to buy uh, the vectors of production for uh, processing purposes. Okay, right. So now we'll send that. The government provides funding for infrastructure e.g. we have road and the lights. And the second one we are saying that if this infrastructure is not reliable. Not reliable or maintained. Yo, remember, hey, there are a lot of roads with um, potholes. Hey, they are not maintained. It becomes difficult for businesses to achieve higher productivity rates. Okay, great talks. So now, um, let's move on to the next question. So now, the next question we have, um, we have a uh, question um, three point um, three. So three point three reads as follow: Study the cartoon video and answer the questions that um, follow. So now, uh, you read the cartoon, you check what is going on on the cartoon. Then from there, we what we we deal with the questions that follow. Then the first question says, what is the net international benchmark? Uh, public debt um, percentage GDP ratio. So now it is uh, given there as how much as um, 60%. Okay, right. So moving on, uh, we move on to the next question. The next question we have um, 3.3.2. List one example of community good. Community good here, we can talk of what street lights, can also talk of um, traffic lights and the lights. So now here we are saying that um, we have what? We have street lights. The next example. So briefly describe the term full employment. Full employment is a situation where all people who are available and searching for work can find a job at the prevailing remuneration rates and um, conditions. We are saying that this is nothing but situation where all people are available and searching for work can find a job At the prevailing enumeration rates and conditions. Okay, right, good talks. So now moving on to 3.3.4. How can the progressive tax system affect the, the redistribution of wealth in South Africa? Remember, I said it in, in South Africa, South Africa. Uh, normally you see some progressive tax to make sure that they re redistribute income from those who are earning a lot towards those who are who are poor. So now it means that this progressive one, it, it, it says that the more you earn, the more you are taxed. Okay, right, great talks. So now uh, this can actually be used 
to, re to re redistribute our income from those of uh, uh, higher income earners towards uh, those of lower income earners by disproportionately uh, taxing higher incomes. Also, the higher tax share of those who are wealthier will result in an increased income share to the low income earners. Okay, right. So now we're saying that The higher tax show of those who are wealthier will result. In an increased income increased income share to the low income years. Okay, right. So now let's move on to the next question. Great um great talks. The next question we have um uh three point 3.5. So 3.3.5 reads as follows. Uh, analyze the cartoon and, and uh, state what impact uh, the situation will have on the main budget. So now when you analyze the cartoon, when you check the cartoon, uh, Great Tows, let's check this cartoon. When we check this cartoon, we observe that um, uh, it indicates that uh, the current taxpayers of 5.8% is totally inadequate for government expenditure. Also, if you check the revenue that will be collected from the small base of taxpayers cannot sustain all the responsibilities in providing for the nation. Okay, right. So now let's write the points that we have observed from the, from the cartoon. So we are saying that um, from this cartoon, we observed that um, uh, the current taxpayers... Current tax payers, which is 5.8%, is totally inadequate. It's totally not enough for government expenditure. Government expenditure. And then goes off for marks, then two points. Also said that the revenue, the revenues that will be collected from the small base of taxpayers. Base of taxpayers <clears throat> cannot sustain, cannot, cannot sustain all the responsibilities responsibilities in providing for the nation. Okay, right. So now, Great Tops, uh, at this level, uh, now we have landed on, on our question, uh, question 3.4. Uh, Okay, right. So now if we check um, uh, 3.4, 3.4 says discuss export promotion and import control as measures used to correct the balance of payments. So now under export uh, promotion, uh, we can actually say that imports will be uh, discouraged as more uh, locally uh, produced goods uh, normally 
taken into account. And also, if we check, the export promotion can be used to ensure that more goods and services are locally produced. So we are saying that, saying export promotion, So we are saying that imports will be discouraged as more locally produced locally goods or local goods are produced. Correct. As more local goods are produced, as more local goods are produced. Okay, right. So now we also said that export promotion. Export promotion can be used to ensure that more goods and services, more goods and services are locally produced. Good. So now let's check on the side of import promotion. The same that under import promotion, this one they include import tariffs, other uh, duties, and quotas. They include import tariffs. Other duties and quotas. Again, import controls import controls. Um, uh, measures to discourage the import of certain goods and services. Okay, right. So now we move on to question 3.5. 3.5 uh, reads as follow. Why is it so important to calculate the real GDP? It is so important to calculate the real GDP because uh, this is going to be what? The growth rate of the real GDP is often used as an indicator of the general um, health of the economy. Also, GDP is important because it gives information about the size of the economy and how an economy is performing. Also, in the same manner, real GDP makes comparing GDP from year to year and from different years more meaningful because it shows comparisons for both the quantity as well as the value of goods and services. In the same manner, real GDP also measures and uh, economies are total goods and services in a given year, taking into account a uh, different set of uh, changes in price of levels. Okay, right. Saying that GDP is important because it gives, it is so important 
goes it gives information about the size of the economy and how an economy is performing. Is performing. Also, the growth rate Growth rate of real GDP is often used as an indicator, indicator of the general of of the economy and again the saying that gdp is so important because it gives information about the size but the size also, we mentioned the growth rate. And then also, let's check in broad terms. An increase in GDP, real GDP, an increase in real GDP. Is interpreted. Interpreted as a, a sign that the economy is doing well. And lastly, Real GDP, real GDP measures an economy economy's total real GDP measures an economy's total goods and services. In a given year, taking into account changes in the price levels. Okay, right. So now, uh, great jobs at this juncture. Uh, we are done with our, 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 our um, question three. Now let's move on to uh, question four. Okay, great jobs. Um, we have now landed on question question four. Okay, right. So now um, let's check 4.1. 4.1 reads as follow. Answer the following questions. So now under 4.1, we have two sub um, questions, which is 4.1.1 uh, as well as uh, 4.1.2. Okay, right. So now 4.1.1 goes um, as follow. Name two transactions in the capital transfer account. So now what is this capital transfer account? Capital transfer account is the account um, that records um, the transactions uh, pertaining to fixed assets. So now these are transactions. Uh, there are transactions um, 
that are taking place um between or you know, amongst the uh, different set of uh, countries okay right so now uh the the, the transactions that are actually appearing here we said that uh, we have debt forgiveness we also have grants relating to the ownership of fixed assets we also have uh, financial claims and liabilities uh, from um uh, my friends okay right so now we're saying that um we have uh, debt uh, forgiveness that um forgiveness forgiveness and then we also have um financial claims financial claims and liabilities from migrants okay right why are we why are we giving two points because uh the question is uh, so clear uh, the expectation is to give up um uh two points of which uh, each uh, question or each point each point uh carries um one mark okay right so now great talks let's move on to the next question the next question uh, is 4.1.2 so it reads as follow why must the government conserve and preserve resources. So that there are different set of um, reasons why the government can actually conserve and preserve uh, resources. One of the reasons is that the government protects resources so as to ensure sustainability of those resources. On the other hand, there are, for example, laws against the uh, poaching of um, rhino race and uh, abalone as this uh, species may become extinct if they are not um, protected. And again, the government conserves resources so as to ensure less expenditure in spent or recovering the resources. So now if we check um, the, the, the marks allocated, the marks allocated, uh, the expectation is to come up um, with one point. So now we're saying that um, the government, the government, protects resources government protects resources so as to ensure sustainability of uh, those um, resources. Okay, oh, right, great talks. So now let's move on to uh, the next question. And the next question that we are moving on to is um, question 4.2. And 4.2 uh, reads as follow. Study the, the graph below and answer the questions uh, that follow. If you check, um, uh, this uh, actually uh, uh, is a multiplier. And you should know uh, what this multiplier is. So when we talk of multiplier in simple terms, multiplier will refer to changes in national income brought by a change in leakages as well as uh, injections. So now um, let's check uh, the questions uh, that follow after this uh, multiplier. But you should be in the position to know the meaning of um, all of these uh, curves as well as um, uh, the axis given. So now, in most cases, whenever you are dealing with the multiplier, on the uh, 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 y-axis, uh, we are always uh, given uh, given what given <clears throat> income as well as um, expenditures on on the x-axis. Okay, right. So now let's check four point two point one. Four point two point one reads as follows: Identify the number of participants uh, represented in the multiplier model above. So remember, great tops. Whenever the question says identify. The expectation is just to go uh, to the given scenario or go to the given diagram or go to the given um, cartoon and you just uh, pick the answer from there. There's no need for you to think. Okay, that is why in most cases I encourage uh, grade 12 to always pay attention to action verbs because action verbs normally are the ones that will give you a lead on how best you can approach uh, a question. Okay, right. So now if we identify the number of participants represented in the multiplier model above, how many are they? They are three. So meaning here, we have um, three uh, participants. 
Okay, right, great talk. So now let's move on to the next question. The next question that we have or we are faced with is um uh, question 4.2.2. And this question reads as follows. What is the purpose of the 45 degrees line in the graph? The purpose of this graph or the purpose of um uh, this um decrease is actually for equality line or the line where income and expenditure uh, are supposed to be equal. If we check uh, here on the graph, we check on the graph. If we check here, you see that this divides uh, what divides um, our plane into into two uh, equal parts. So now, if we check that part or that side is the same as this one. That is why we are saying that this is nothing but equality line or the line where income and expenditure are actually um, uh, equal. So now we are saying that um, this is equality line. This is equality, equality line. Okay, great talk. So now uh, let's move on to the next question. The next question we are faced with um, 4.2.3. So now 4.2.3, it reads as follows. Briefly describe the term, marginal propensity to save. Um, so in most cases, I know when it comes to uh, marginal propensity to save, as well as marginal propensity to consume. Most of the great 12s, I know uh, it is somehow very difficult for them uh, to actually differentiate the two. And also it is somehow not easy for them uh, to actually come up with um, the correct uh, definition. Okay, I'll first um, I'll discuss the issue of the marginal propensity to consume. So now when we talk of the marginal propensity to consume, we talk of the additional income, additional income uh, that household um, Household are uh, choose to spend on buying goods and services. That is the meaning of a uh, marginal propensity to consume. Additional income that household um, choose to spend on buying goods and services. But now, when it comes to uh, a marginal propensity to save, this is an additional income that household um, uh, what are uh, planned to to save instead of um, spending it on buying goods and services. That is why we can actually say that this is nothing but the portion of additional income that household uh, choose to to save for future uncertainties. Okay, right. We are saying that this is nothing but the portion, the portion of additional income. Portion of additional income that households that households choose to save. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to the next question. And the next question that we are faced with, uh, we have 4.2.4, .4, and it reads as follows. How can a negative multiplier okay in the circular flow model? Remember, great talks, I always tell you that whenever you are dealing with any, any question, make sure that you identify the keywords, and the keywords are the ones that are going to alert you. So now in this regard, it means that uh, the keywords that we have, we have the word multiplier, we also have um, a phrase, uh, circular flow. So now, multiplier, remember I said, whenever we talk of the multiplier, we refer to changes in national income, brought by the change in uh, either um, leakages or uh, injections. Okay, right. So now when we talk of the circular flow model, circular flow model is nothing but the model that shows the flow of our production or that shows also the flow of expenditure that also shows the flow of income amongst the different set of um, uh, decision makers or amongst different set of um, um market uh, participants and um, this market participants uh, or the decision makers that you're actually referring to we are referring to household we are referring to firms we are referring to government as well as the foreign sector okay right so now um the negative multiply effect occurs when an initial withdrawal or leakages of spending from the circular flow leads to no goal effects and a bigger final drop in real uh, gdp i'll come again the negative multiply effect occurs when an initial withdrawal or leakage of spending from the circular flow leads to knock-on effects and bigger final drop 
in our real GDP. Remember, when we talk of our real GDP, we refer to what? We refer to the GDP where inflation has been actually catered for. Remember, we have our nominal GDP and nominal GDP, uh, we just check um, the current what, the current figure where the inflation is not actually um, catered for. And also remember the word or uh, GDP. GDP is, is, is what? A gross domestic product. And this gross domestic product, we refer to monetary value of goods and services uh, that have been uh, produced within borders of um, a particular country, and usually we check the time period of um, a year or two months. Okay, so now we're saying that um, the negative effect, send the negative, negative multiplier, negative multiplier effect occurs. When an initial, when an initial withdrawal, when an initial withdrawal or leakage or spending from the Circular flow. Let's to knock on effects in a bigger final draw. In real GDP. Real GDP. Okay, right. Great talks. So now um, we are done with um, uh, our question uh, 4.2.24. So now let's actually um, move on to the next question, which is uh, 4.2.5. Um, uh, so now this question reads as follows Calculate the multiplier from the information provided in the graph. Um, above. So great to have remember whenever you calculate uh, the multiplier you should be in the position to know the formula that you are going to, to use. In this regard, the formula that you are going to use, you are going to check out uh, and then we say that the multiplier multiplier is equivalent to a change in in income uh, brought by also or divided by a change in, in aggregate um, demand or expenditure. So now uh, we can also write it in words, change in income divided by change in total expenditure. Okay, right. So now, if we check the changes that we have, let's check from the graph the changes that we have, especially when it comes to the issue of income. The changes that we have, here we have what? We have uh, 400, uh, also we have um, uh, 1,000. It means that the change is from 400 to 1,000. And also when it comes to the side of the expenditure, our change is from uh, 300 um, to 600. So in this regard, we are going to check the difference um, between um, the first income as well as the second income. Also, we are going to check the difference uh, between the first expenditure as well as the second um, expenditure. So in this regard, when we substitute, we are actually going to say 400 because this is the initial income. So now we subtract uh, what the second income, then we divide by 300 because 300 is our initial expenditure. Then the second expenditure, we have um, 600. So now when we calculate, then we are left with um, negative um, 600 divided by negative um, 300. Remember, great talks, uh, maths in maths, negative divided by negative uh, normally gives us um, a positive. So now in this regard, uh, we have um, positive because now uh, we are going to have um, negative divided by negative. So negative divided by negative um, is positive. That is not me, but it's the rule of mathematics. It is uh, like that. So in this regard, 
300 divided by by 600 then we are left with a um, few hundred so i mean two so now this two it is our um, our multiplier so this is uh what the question actually needed us um to calculate so now also grade 12 uh, when 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 you are dealing with economics, you should be equipped with um basics of pure math. Yeah, you should be equipped with basics of pure math, and also you should be sharp when it comes to mathematics because economics somehow uh, is part of a science uh, subject. Even though it does uh, fall under commercials, but uh, in actual fact, you should be equipped with um uh, pure math. Okay, right, great talks. So now. Let's move on to the, the next question. The next question, we have 4.3. Uh, and 4.3 uh, reads as follows. Study the information below and answer the questions uh, uh, that follow. So now we are given uh, the table there. So now we have to study the table given. We have composite business cycle indicators uh, for South Africa. So now uh, I will explain um, uh, the composite and also I will explain uh, the business cycle. Also, I will explain the word. Uh, indicators. So now when we talk of the word indicators under economics, uh, we refer to a sign that shows um, uh, where the economy is actually heading. This is a sign. And this sign is the one that will give us a lead on the performance of our economy. So now when it comes to the definition or the meaning of business cycle, when you talk of business cycle, we refer to the fluctuations of um, economic activities or the upswings and downswings of economic um, activities. So now when you talk of composite uh, indicator, composite indicator, we normally refer to what? We normally refer to a combination of different set of um, indicators. Okay, right. So now here we are given what? We are given the indices uh, for 2015 and also we are having leading indicator and also you have in term month percentage um, a change. And if we check here, we are also given what we are also given uh, the figures per each uh, month. We have figures for May, figures for April, up until figures for, for November. Okay, right. So now <clears throat> uh, the first question under 4.3, uh, which is 4.3.1, reads as follows. Name one example of leading economic um, indicator. Remember I said whenever we talk of an indicator, we refer to a sign uh, that can actually uh, show us where the economy is actually uh, heading. So now we are we are having a leading indicator. A leading indicator, this is um, what the indicator that changes before the economy can actually change. It means this one is the one that is actually leading us. That is why we are saying that uh, it is a sign uh, that changes uh, before the economy can actually uh, change. So now they need us to give a different set of uh, examples. So now we have a different set of these examples, even though the question needs us to uh, give one, I'll try by all means to give as many as possible. So now number one, you can say the number of new vehicles sold. Number of new vehicles sold can be an example of leading indicator. Also, we can talk of the number of building plans approved can also be an example of a um, leading indicator. Also, it can refer to the job advertising space used by job advertisements also can be one of the examples. So now here we're actually saying that um, um, we have what the number, the number of new vehicles, number of new vehicles, number of new vehicles, sold. So one point because of one mark. So now let's move on to the next question, which is 4.3.2. So 4.3.2, it reads as follows. Which economic indicator confirms the behavior of a consistent indicator? What is this consistent indicator? This is the indicator or this is the sign that changes um, together with the economy. When the economy changes, also this sign or this indicator as well uh, changes. So meaning here, an example can be what? Can be lacking indicator. Our example in this regard can be what? A lacking indicator. A lacking indicator. Okay, great, Toss, fine. Let's now move on to the next question. The next question that we are faced with, uh, we are faced with, um, um, 4.3.3. So 4.3.3 uh, reads as follows. Briefly describe the term composite indicator. 
I, I did uh, explain it uh, when I was uh, explaining the table. I said uh, composite indicator as the word goes composite. It means here we check what you check the combination of different set of indicators. In short, this is a summary of the various indicators of the same type into a single value. Uh, saying that this is the summary. This is nothing but the summary. This is the summary, the summary of the various, summary of the various indicators, various indicators of the same type, of the same type into a single value. Okay, great job. So now we are done with um, our four point, our four point, uh, our four point um, uh, three point three. So now let's um, jump on to four point three point four. So four point three point four reads as follows. Explain the effect, explain the effect of government spending during a recession in the business cycle. So now, guys, remember, in the business cycle, our business cycle normally, uh, 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 it, it looks like this, uh, we'll be having, and this is our trend line. This is our trend line. So this is our peak. This is our turning point uh, truth. This is our turning point uh, uh, peak. So now here, here is where we have recession. When this recession is before uh, what before uh, the crossing of the, the trend line. And remember the trend line, uh, uh, this is the line that measures uh, the long-term um, economic growth. And this eco long-term economic growth or economic growth in short, we refer to improvement of um, businesses in terms of the production of goods uh, and um, services. Okay, right. So now let's explain. When we explain increased uh, government spending raises aggregate demand and increases consumption, which leads to increased uh, production and faster recovery from um, recession. We are saying that increased government spending raises aggregate demand and increases consumption, which leads to increased production and faster recovery from recession. Okay, right. So now we are saying increased, increased, increased government, increased the government spending, increased the government spending, Races, aggregate demand, aggregate demand, aggregate demand, and increases consumption. And increases consumption and faster recovery from recession. From re recession. Okay, right. So now, great jobs. Uh, at this time, now we are done or we are actually completed um, uh, our 4.3.4. So now let's land on to 4.3.5. Uh, so now 4.3.5 reads as follows. Calculate the first six months uh, moving average. So now uh, move six months moving average for the leading economic um, indicator. What is this moving average? Moving average is a concept that we use to predict uh, the future events uh, but using the current um, data. So now in this regard, when we calculate our moving average, we are actually uh, going to check what? We are going to check the figures uh, for, for March. Also, we are going to check for April. And also, we are going to check for May. And also, we are going to check um, for June. Also, we are going to check 
uh, for, for, for July, and also you are going to check um, for August. So now from there, then we divide um, the sum of them uh, with um, a six. So now it means that we are going to, uh, we are going to check this one, two, three, four, five, six. So now you will add them, I and mean, you add this one, you add, you add, you add, you add, you add, then divide by by six. Okay, right. So now we are saying that um, we have um, 127.3 plus 133.3 plus 136.2 plus 130.2 plus 127.0 plus 127.9. So now, all of this, then you divide by 6. So now here, the sum of this is going to be 781.9 divided by, by 6. So now, our final answer is going to be 130. Point um, three one. Okay, great twelve. So this was uh, what uh, the question wanted you to actually come up um, with. So now, when it comes to these uh, moving averages, moving average, it is so 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 simple. When you should be in the position to understand what the question uh, needs, just like this one, the question says calculate the the first six months moving average for the leading economic um, indicator. So as I have shown you how best you can approach this question, always make sure that you follow suit even when you are dealing with different set of um, uh, scenarios, but uh, still dealing with the same concept. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to 4.4. Um, 4. So now 4.4 4, uh, reads um, as follow. 4.4 4 reads as follow. Yeah, 4.4 4 reads um, as follow. Four point four reads as follows: Explain the lever curve. Explain the lever curve um, with the aid of um, a graph. So now this lever is the name of a person. Is the name of a person. So now he come. He came up with his curve. He has his own approach, and his own approach uh, is, is is with regard to the relationship between uh, total tax revenues as well as um, tax rate. Meaning, you know, his approach is in line with um, uh, total tax revenue as well as um, uh, tax um, rate. So now let's um, explain this uh, using a curve. So now the gentleman is saying that, um, let's check. We have um, this. This is his curve. This is the curve of Mr. Lever. So on, the, on, the, on this axis, we have uh, tax rate so now on the on the on this side of the axis we have total this side we have total total tax revenue sorry because there's no enough space uh that side so now Let's check the vicars. So here we can have 40% weight. And then here we can have B. So here we have R maximum. R max. So here we can have 100%. And then here we can have uh, zero percent. Okay, right, grid 12. So now let's check. The government will obtain zero revenue when tax rate is 100. Check. When the tax rate is 100 here, the revenue is what? Is zero. So we are saying that government will receive 
zero. Revenues. One. Tax rate is 100%. Yes, let's check it at 100. When the tax rate is 100, so now the revenues here is what? Zero. Okay. Okay, great terms. Also, we can say higher tax rates could lead to tax avoidance. Of course, if the government now imposes too much uh, tax rate either towards our businesses or towards um, individuals, that is going to discourage uh, what discourage um, uh, uh, the what the the availability of uh, labor uh, to work, or it will actually discourage uh, production of goods and services by businesses. So now here we are saying that um, the higher tax rates, the higher tax rates. Could lead to tax avoidance. Lead to tax avoidance. So now for the graph, you will be allocated four marks for the graph. So for this, um, also be having two marks. You will also be having uh, two marks. Okay, all in all, then you get um, eight um, marks. Okay, right. So now let's move on to 4.5. 4. Um, so now 4.5 um, reads as follows. Analyze the conditions during a boom and how monetary policy pulls down the economy in the business um, cycle. Remember, uh, when the economic activities are at boom, it means that... Um, uh, there is full employment of resources. Resources are not being wasted. There is too much efficiency at this point. What you refer to, you are saying that uh, at this point or at this uh, turning point, businesses are able to make a lot of profits. Individuals are getting jobs. Also, the government is able uh, to collect uh, enough um, tax revenues and also it is able to issue out grants as expected. And also, we have more of the exports than imports. And also, businesses are able uh, to invest um, whatsoever funds that they have. And also, we'll be having a lot of foreign investors in this regard. Okay, right. So now, let's check out the monetary policy. What is this monetary policy? Monetary policy is the policy uh, that is actually uh, being being what being led uh, by the the central bank or reserve bank. So now this policy uh, it has um, two instruments, and the instruments under this policy we have um, monetary supply as well as uh, um, interest um, rate. Okay, so now it do depend. It do depend on the on the what on the behavior of the economy. Like in this regard, if the economy is at boom, it means that almost each and every economic activity is performing in an impressive manner. So now monetary policy in this regard, there's, there's, they are going to limit or reuse the money supply, but now going to increase the level of the interest rate. Okay, right. So now let's check the condition. During boom, high levels of production, employment in economic activities uh, do prevail. Also, our gross domestic product activities normally increase. Also, we check the credit and high wages will prevail because employment levels are somehow very impressive. And also, we check inflation will accelerate because aggregate demand will exceed uh, aggregate um, supply. And then as well, the business sector will over invest to keep up with the accelerated demand for goods and um, services. Okay, right. So now... The expectation here is to come up with four points because of um, eight marks. And also the question, uh, it does, I mean, the, the, the ones inside the, 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 the brackets also does give us a lead that the expectation is to come up with four points and each point uh, carries some um, two marks. Okay, right, great talks. So now we are saying that um, um, GDP or gross domestic product, GDP activities, GDP activities, Increase. GDP activities increase. Also, we are seeing that um, credit 
and higher wages. Credit and high wages. Credit and high wages will prevail. Why will it prevail? Because employment levels are high. Okay, right. So now moving on to the next um uh, the next um point saying that the business sector the business sector will overinvest overinvest to keep Keep up with the accelerated demand for goods and services. Say the demand for goods and uh, the services. So the last bullet, we are saying that during a boom, during a boom, high levels of production employment and economic activities, and economic activities. Will prevail. Okay, right, great talks. So now at this level, we have actually completed um, our question 4.5. So now let's move on to our last section. Our last section is section C. And section C uh, comprises of um is a is a is a questions. And the expectation under this section C it is uh to make sure that you select one question out of um, two. And uh, you should uh, spend uh, 40 minutes on this question uh, because it does carry uh, 40 marks. So now the good part of our economics papers, in most cases, uh, they normally uh, uh, also show the time uh, that you must spend under each and every uh, question. So now let's check um, also the structure of the ESA under economics. The structure of the ESA under economics is so simple. Because the, the, the bullets that are given or the questions that are given, they, will, they actually give you a lead. So now let's check um, the questions given. When we check out uh, the questions given, here we have what? Here we have um, uh, discussed in detail. Uh, we have 26 marks. We also have 10 marks. So now this 26 marks is your what? Your main body. This is main body. And then this one of 10 marks, it is your additional pod. This is your additional, additional part. So now if we check here, what is left? We are left with conclusion. And then we're also left with introduction. And great talks, remember, under economics, in most cases under economics, the expectation is to always make sure that um, uh, you, what you don't write or you don't uh, structure your essay using paragraphs, but you prefer uh, what you prefer uh, you guys to always make sure that um, you write in a bullet um, a format. So now I know most people under especially this essay, they think it is uh, somewhat very uh, complicated. No, it is not complicated. These are marks also can give you a lead of what you must um, actually do. So now under the introduction part, the expectation is to come up with two points, of which one point uh, carries some um, one mark, and also under under what under under the main body, the main the, the major 
essence there also under main body. You should come up with a, a 13 points of which um, um of which uh, each point um, carries some um, uh, two marks, then that will lend to uh, 26 marks. And also under the additional part, under additional part, the expectation as well is to come up with five points of which each point uh, carries some um, two marks. So now coming to conclusion, conclusion, the expectation is also to come up with um, uh, two points. So now let's check the introduction under, um, under this. So now when we check the introduction under, 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 under this uh, question, so now the question um, uh, reads as follows. The first one for question five. Let's now uh, deal with um, question five. So now after question five, that's when now we'll move on to question six. So now the question reads, discuss in detail reasons for public um, sector failure and link them to typical problems experienced through public um, sector provision. What is this public sector? The public sector here will refer to the state or the government. Uh, that uh, provide uh, individuals uh, or the economy uh, with um, free gold. Okay, right. So now what can be the introduction of this? The introduction can be uh, the public sector failure occurs when government intervention fails to meet the desired outcome, uh, making the existing economy uh, situation worse. I'll come again for the introduction. Introduction, you can say public sector failure occurs when government intervention fails to meet the desired outcome, making the existing economy um, economic situation uh, more uh, worse. Okay, right. So now let's check um, the main the main body. The main body uh, we have what the question that says discuss in detail reasons for uh, public sector failure and link them to uh, typical problems experienced um, through public sector provision. So now in this regard, we are going to pay attention to management failure, because there is management failure uh, when it comes to the public um, sector. So now the state in this regard, they fail to manage the resources efficiently. Some of the resources that are being wasted. Also, we are going to check um, apathy. Apathy in this regard, um, there is a corruption and poor service delivery as a sign of um, apathy, and this may actually cause a poor accountability. And also, we can talk of the bureaucrats. Bureaucrats, uh, these guys, in most cases, they just follow law. They do what is right. They can't think out of, outside the box. Also, we can say that uh, most of the public servants, they lack um, motivation. Also, we can talk of the politicians, because our politicians are the ones um, occupying the driver's seat of the economy. So now, most of the times, uh, these politicians are the one who lack accountability. Also, we can check um, the structural uh, weaknesses of the economy. Also, structural weaknesses of the economy can also play a major role when it comes to public uh, sector failure. So now, also we can check the special interest groups because some of the uh, some of the government bodies, whenever they are there for the government, what they do, uh, they serve their own uh, interest instead of um, uh, what um, saving whatsoever is best or saving whatsoever that they are ought um, uh, to do. Okay, right, great talks. So now um, let's check, um, I, I told you that we are going to talk of the management um, failure. So since the assessing of needs is difficult, so the state might oversupply some goods and undersupply some other um, goods. So in this way, management was not able to satisfy the needs of the consumers and there will be wastages are leading to the public sector failure. So people working in the uh, parastatals, parastatals we refer to those businesses where the government also is having what? Is having the part of um, ownership. So now we are saying that people working in parastatals might lack management skills and might end up um, implementing wrong policies that may cause the public sector to fail. Also, if the management cannot explain the decisions that they took and explain how they spend the money, they have been allocated, then they are not accountable. And this may be a result of um, corruption. Because now, if we check most of the African countries, uh, they say the same, uh, same name, which is uh, corruption. So now, corruption results in most cases in inefficiency that uh, can actually lead to failure in public um, sector. So now, also, this can be linked to inefficiency due to their lack of um, training or skills. Because if you check the uh, in the government, people are actually 
been um, uh, given uh, waivers. So now a stable judge continuously arrives late for court uh, sessions due to tardiness, and this is in turn uh, cause a block of um, court cases, then the judge is not taken to task. So that's what is normally taking place. So this can be linked to what we call accountability. So now let's move on to APAV. APAV government servants in most cases do not provide an efficient service to the public as a result of um, corruption. So now corruption and poor service delivery are signs of apathy and may cause poor accountability. So parastatal employees also lack the interest or concern because they know they will not get paid even when they, I mean, they know that very well that they will get paid even when they are underperforming. I would say that again. Parastatal employees here, especially in here South Africa, they do lack the interest or concern because they know very well that they will get paid even when they are underperforming. So our, uh, a, a ward councillor in most cases receives the approval for the building of new uh, communal toilet at a local park. But the building of the toilets is delayed because um, the required paperwork was never submitted to the building contractor. I'll say that again. A ward councillor receives the approval for the building of new communal toilets at local park. But the building of the toilets is delayed because the required paperwork was never submitted to the building contractor. So this can be linked to what you call in um, efficiency. Okay, right, grade 12. So now at this juncture, we can actually now pass on to the bureaucrats. Um, these guys, complex rules and procedures might lead to inefficiency in the public sector. And the public sector might fail to provide the goods and services in time for the uh, consumers. So for example, if there is water leakage at one house, the municipality will send their workers to go there, fix the leakage, and the workers will only fix that leakage because uh, they were told to fix that uh, leakage. Even if there is a leakage in a neighboring wood, they will not fix it, but they will need that fault to be reported. Then only can they come and um, fix it. So this simply means that the municipality cannot satisfy the needs of consumers in time because of the rules and procedures that have been uh, that needs to be followed and which might sometimes take long or might sometimes uh, take ages. So for a typical example, civil servants may feel overwhelmed by the rules and regulations resulting in uh, complacency as well as uh, demoralization. So this problem can be linked to as well efficiency and assessing needs. So now let's move on to lack of motivation for public servants. So nationalization of companies may demotivate workers from working hard as they hard work uh, will never ever be recognized. Yes, I will say that again. Under lack of motivation, national, nationalization of uh, companies or nationalization of companies may demotivate workers from working hard as their hard work will never ever be recognized. But when calling a private medical aid facility, clients are often encouraged at the end of the call to complete a survey, to evaluate the service. Ah, what's that? So helpfulness and willingness to assist that they have received from the service provider. However, the state departments have no mechanism uh, with which to evaluate the service that the public has actually received. So this can also be linked to efficiency and assessing of needs. Aha, right. So now let's move on to the politicians. Remember the politicians? These are the ones that are occupying the driver's seat of the government. Remember when you talk of the government, we refer to a different set of bodies or uh, the state that normally uh, provide the public with what with um, the free gold. So now under this uh, government, we have different set of bodies. We have the bureaucrats. Bureaucrats are the form part of the government. We also have the society. The society also form part of the government. We also have the politicians. The politicians also form part of the government. We also have the lawyers. Lawyers also uh, form part of the government. We also have the chiefs. Chiefs also form part of the, the government. So the list can actually be endless. But in most cases, our great talks are when we talk of the government, we only think of the politicians, of course, because they are the ones who are actually occupying the driver's seat uh, of, the, of the economy or the driver's seat uh, of the government. So now these politicians, in most cases, they lack 
uh, accountability or lack of accountability by these politicians may be a result of corruption. And this may lead to them not fulfilling the promises they made to individuals whenever they were running their own campaigns. Because these guys, whenever they campaign, they come up with a different set of lies. Even their manifestos, they can lie. They can lie to an extent that you see these people are lying. But you find that they can be in a position to convince some individuals. So those some individuals can be in a position also to vote for them. Thinking that the moment they get inside the parliament, they, want, they, want, uh, they will uh, address uh, their needs but they don't do that. Okay, right. So when calling a private, I mean, actually, as the politicians are not uh, accountable for their actions, resources may not be allocated fairly because of corruption. I will say it again. As these politicians are not accountable for their actions, resources may not be allocated fairly because of um, uh, this um, word corruption. I will say it again. These are uh, uh, African countries, most of them, they share the same uh, say name, which is uh, corruption. So I think it's high time. Now different set of uh, economies should actually uh, engage young uh, 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 presidents. Because young presidents, they can actually come up with the flexibility uh, to, 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 to adopt to different set of measures or strategies so as to uplift their own um, countries. Unlike these old people, they must go home and uh, look after their grand um, and children. Okay, right. So the Minister of Health approves a contract for a vaccination program from a company where he is a major uh, stakeholder without disclosing this uh, patent information. I will say it again. The Minister of Health approves a contract for a vaccination program from his company. And he didn't disclose such information. So this can be linked to lack of accountability, or this can be linked to accountability as well as um, efficiency. So now let's move on to structural weaknesses. Structural weaknesses also uh, can play a part. So incompetence of workers may lead to the workers not being able to provide efficient services to the public. So nationalization of companies that provide a different good than which the state provides may uh, make it so difficult for the state to be actually in the position to provide uh, that particular good. So now let's check. ESCOM is the only service provider of electricity in South Africa. And when power outages okay, it impacts the efficiency of the entire country. Now we're experiencing load shedding. As we speak, we're, we're experiencing load shedding in the whole South Africa. What has been done? Is there any signs of, 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 of uh, moving out of this uh, load shedding? Yes, I know there, are, there, are, there, are, there is a project of um, uh, solar panels uh, that they say that uh, it is going also uh, to help with um, electricity provision. But I still doubt that. If that would be uh, uh, efficient, I would still doubt it. But let's see, maybe as time lapses, uh, it will. So now, all of this can also be linked to accountability and um, as well as um, efficient. So now moving on, let's check um, the special interest groups because some of these guys, uh, they actually get elected uh, to go there and represent uh, what the needs of um, the people. But when they get there, they don't do that. They serve their own interest. And in most cases, what they do, they divert the public money towards their own pockets. I'll say it again. In most cases, they, they, they do divert public funds or resources towards their own pocket. So now special uh, interest groups can be actually viewed as using their political power to raise demand for public services as well as using their bargaining power to fight for higher wages as much as they always do. What they do, they always fight for higher wages. Is there any, 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 any provision of services? Totally not. So now special interest groups uh, which are political, I mean politicians. So this special um, interest group political power leads to more government spending. We strain the government expenditure for the fiscal year. So huge strikes caused by special interest groups such as South African uh, Tax Association also decreases uh, production of the economy since people will not be uh, uh, in the position to have alternative transportation to work. So they know very well that the moment they stop uh, or they pack their taxes at home, uh, most of the uh, working force here in South Africa, they won't make it to work. 
because the majority or most of the people depend on their transportation on daily basis. So now trade unions normally or could pressure the government to pass certain legislation to favor their members, but at the cost of long-term investment from potential investors. So this can also be linked to efficiency. Okay, right. So now I think uh, we have elapsed points under, under 26 months where we're discussing uh, detailed reasons for public sector failure. So now, great talks now. Let's move on to uh, the next one, the next question. And this next question is says that um, we must uh, what we must evaluate the implementation of a basic income grant in South Africa. So now let's evaluate. So remember, I told you that in this regard, since the max allocation is ten, you are expected to come up with um, only five um, points. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's check um, the positive effect. The positive effect can be that the social relief of um, distress grant will use some of the hardship faced by the societies and make everyone feel recognized and included. And this will actually boost the purchasing power of the poorest and will create income multipliers, uh, which will actually stimulate local economic growth as well as um, proper livelihoods. So also it will uh, improve the effectiveness of the existing social grant. So the child support grant is intended to meet the basic needs of children in low-income households. But instead, this cage is spread among the entire family because unemployed parents and um, caregivers also need food and uh, clothing. So a basic income could have a positive impact on reducing medical costs associated with types of um, poverty as well as um, homelessness. So now a basic income grant will assist in narrowing the inequality gap. As South Africa is uh, one of the most and equal societies in the world. So here in South Africa, we have a higher Gini coefficient. So basic income uh, also support um, uh, or helps boost investment aimed at improving nutrition, healthcare, housing, as well as transport. So the basic income can, uh, could also add uh, 0.5% to GDP growth by 2025 by improving household demand as well as um, boosting um, the employment. Okay, great talk. So now at this level now, let's check out the side of negatives. So the side of negatives, a basic income grant will require significant long-term tax increases, and this will likely lead to employment losses. We first sustain the higher income growth. Much higher social transfer uh, could threaten fiscal sustainability, of which it removes the incentive to work, adversely af affecting the economy and leading to labor and skill, uh, skills um, actually shortages. So the problem is that it must be administered. So the government already struggles endlessly to distribute existing grants. There are frequent delays. Grants are never paid until when after the end of the month and fraud I plays a major role. Hey. So now we are done with this question. Let's move on to the conclusion. Let's conclude. So how do we conclude? Great. Great talks. Remember, whenever you do your conclusion, make sure that you don't repeat points that you did uh, mention uh, in your body as well as an um, additional part. So now we can conclude in, 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 in this way. The South African public sector is known for its widespread corruption and inefficiency. And it would be more efficient if they built planning and control systems based on the results. That can be our conclusion. Okay, right, great talk. So now let's actually move on to the next question, which is our question six. So question six reads as follows. Discuss in detail the supply reasons for international trade. So now what is this international trade? In, let's start with the trade. Okay. When we talk of um, a trade, a trade uh, is actually involving uh, buying and selling of goods and services. That is a trade. It's like that. Buying and selling of goods and services. So now when we, we now have international one, meaning the international trade, now it involves countries trading with one another, meaning buying and, and selling of goods and services now do take place um, uh, between two countries or amongst um, a different set of countries. So now we have different types of this international trade. We have a um, bilateral international trade. So now bilateral international trade is when two countries are, are, are what actually uh, buying and selling goods and services between one another. But multilateral trade is when a uh, different side of countries are actually uh, are selling goods um, and services um, amongst um, each other. Okay, right. So now let's check. What is the key concept here? That should be explained under introduction. 
So international trade. So now let's let's give our introduction. So now we say that under under introduction, international trade is the exchange of goods and services across many countries. That is your introduction. So now let's move on to uh, our main main body. Main body, we have to discuss in detail the supply reasons for international trade. So now the supply reasons under international trade in this regard, you are going to discuss natural resources. You are also going to discuss labor resources. You are also going to discuss the availability of capital. You are also going to discuss lack of entrepreneurship. You are also going to discuss climatic conditions. You are also going to discuss technological resources. You are also going to discuss specialization. And also, um, we are going to uh, take into account uh, the additional part after that. Okay, so now, as I said it, uh, the, the, the key points or the subheadings that we are actually going to discuss, now I'm going to start with the natural resources. So natural resources, these resources are not evenly distributed across all countries of the world. So they vary from one country to another and can only be exploited in places where the resources exist. So here in South Africa, or South Africa is well equipped with um, different natural resources, but less uh, resourced with skilled labor and capital as well as machinery to extract those resources. That is why now, if we check for a particular example, most of the mines here in South Africa, they are being owned by what? They are being owned by, by foreigners, people from other countries, especially people from those giant economies from, uh, from abroad or from overseas. So now here, yes, we are endowed as South Africans, or yes, South Africa, we are endowed with a lot of resources. But the machinery to extract such resources, they are not there. Check of a typical example, DBS. DBS is now monopolizing in terms of a provision of the machinery to extract natural resources. Also, the skills, they are not there. How many people are qualified to use such machinery? Few of them. So now, uh, also, we can say an example, you can check out the likes of uh, Japan and also Ireland, which um, have an abundance of skilled labor, but they lack um, uh, natural resources. Okay, fine. So now, great talks. Let's uh, move on. So moving on, uh, we can move on to labor resources. Labor differs between different countries in terms of skills, knowledge, training, quality, quantity, as well as cost. So some countries such as Switzerland have highly skilled, well-paid workers and high productivity levels. So now let's uh, check out the issue of the availability of capital. So some countries need to be modernized. They need to be modernized. So because uh, the industries and economies will actually be advanced. So machinery equipment uh, are actually uh, been in place, but cannot manufacture this uh, equipment because they lack the capital to do so. So this factor has therefore increased the need for international trade. So they have now to work with other countries. Because now uh, they are not, they are sometimes having the machinery, but the resources are not there. Here in South Africa, uh, we have resources. Resources are here. But where are the machinery to extract those resources? The machinery are from the uh, giant economies. Okay, so now let's check lack of um, entrepreneurship. Also lack of entrepreneurship uh, can uh, play a major role. So those countries that have good entrepreneurial skills offer more goods and services for trade. Efficiency determines the supply of goods and services produced at lower prices and also reduces the opportunity cost of acquiring them. What is this opportunity cost? Opportunity cost is the cost of the, the sacrificed alternative. Okay, right. So now, also let's check our technological resources. The developmental levels and innovation processes of um, uh, countries will always differ. And as a result, some countries may have them in abundance, while others may not. I'll come again. The developmental levels and innovation processes of countries will, will always differ, will always be different. And as a result, some countries may have them in abundance, while others may not. So countries such as Germany, and the United States of America can use capital, which represents high levels of technology, while other countries do not have access to the latest technology, such as basic internet services 
and healthcare. So those countries that have higher technological labor forces can produce certain goods and services at lower unit costs, such as the developed um, countries. So now let's move on on the issue of um, specialization, because also specialization can play a major role under, under this um, supply regimes of uh, international trade. So now the production of certain goods and services allows some countries to produce them at a lower cost than other um, uh, producers. So Japan produces electronic uh, goods and services, I mean goods and services, and sell them at a much uh, lower price. So international trade uh, normally enables countries to specialize in the production of goods and services in which they have a comparative advantage above um, others. So most of the surplus production uh, gets exported to other countries and revenue earned from these exports can be used to finance um, the um, uh, import. So now grade 12, at this level, uh, we are done with um, the points under the reasons for international trade, which is our 26 marks. So now let's move on to um, the next question, which is additional part, where you are supposed to examine comparative advantage in international trade by using appropriate um, examples. So let's check how best we can actually examine that. So now, uh, remember the expectation in here, you, you should always uh, make sure that um, you give out um, the five points, of which uh, these uh, points, uh, they are going to make you to land on to uh, 10 marks. So meaning each, um, uh, each uh, point carries uh, two marks. Okay, right, grade 12. So now a country has comparative advantage when the opportunity cost of producing a good is lower than the other country's cost. So uh, if we actually check, um, we can actually uh, come up with an example. So let's check out South Africa and Botswana. So South Africa and Botswana have uh, climates in the production of uh, beans and uh, subrical um, fruits. I'll come again that the example that we are going to use, we are going to check um, the case of South Africa and the case of Botswana. So South Africa and Botswana, they do have um, uh, climates in the production of beans and um, subtropical fruits. So let's assume the production of both countries uh, are in this manner. South Africa, uh, it produces beans of, of 10 uh, kg, and Botswana uh, produces beans of um, uh, 5 um, kg. And also, let's check um, subtropical fruits. South Africa produces uh, subtropical fruits of 10 uh, kg, and Botswana 30 kg. So in this regard, South Africa clearly produces more beans and um, subtropical fruits than Botswana. However, the principle of opportunity cost principle must be identified. So in South Africa, the cost of producing subtropical fruits to beans should be one to four, meaning uh, they have, um, I mean, they will have to sacrifice 40 uh, uh, kg or tons of sub subtropical fruits to produce um, 10 kg of um, uh, beans. I'll come again. In South Africa, the cost of producing a sub subtropical fruits to beans is going to be one is to four, meaning they will have to sacrifice 40 uh, kg of uh, subtropical fruits uh, to produce uh, 10 um, kg of beans. So in Botswana, the opportunity cost is going to be one is to six, meaning they must sacrifice 30 kg of um, tropical fruits so as to produce five kg of beans. So is, this is therefore cost effective for South Africa to produce subtropical fruits in comparison to Botswana. So South Africa has comparative advantage in the production of subtropical food, and Botswana has comparative advantage in the production of um, beans. So now in this regard, South Africa will therefore specialize in exporting uh, subtropical foods to Botswana, while Botswana will specialize in exporting uh, beans to South Africa. Okay, right. So now at this Janja Great Talks, uh, I think uh, we have actually uh, elapsed our points uh, when uh, we were actually examining the comparative advantage in international trade by using an appropriate examples. And then I used an example of um, South Africa and um, Botswana. So now uh, I said that uh, we have uh, SA, we also have um, uh, uh, boards, and then we have um, the beans, and then we also have um, um, sub, uh, draw, p, color, uh, fruit. Fruit. Okay, so here we said South Africa will be having 10, here Botswana will be having 5, and here South Africa will be 40, here Botswana will be having uh, 30. So now uh, that is that. Okay, great talks. So now at this uh, juncture, at this level, 
we have um, uh, landed into our conclusion. And let's check how best we can uh, conclude whatsoever discussion that we're having uh, on the table. So now let's check. Consumers may exhaust the available supply of locally produced goods while exploring international markets for surplus production and unique products. I'll come again. Consumers may exhaust the availability or the available supply of locally produced goods while exploring international markets for surplus production and unique um, products. Uh, Great um, I would love to say uh, thank you uh, for being with me up to this far. Surely you have um, enjoyed our, um, our lesson. We're still going to uh, be together in the next what? In the next um, lessons. May God bless you all, whosoever is going to listen to uh, uh, this, or whosoever is going to uh, study this. Great talks. I wish you, uh, I wish you a success in all your examinations. May God um, bless you all. Shalom. How are you, great tough? Um, surely you are all fine. So today we are actually going to have a lesson uh, in economics. A person who is administering this lesson is uh, Mr. Mohapi Tolo. Surely you are going to enjoy this um, lesson. Um, the paper that we are actually going to discuss, we are going to discuss June, uh, June exam 2023, economics uh, paper, paper one. So remember the duration of uh, the paper is two hours. And remember, before you can kickstart in answering any, any question, you should always make sure that you go through a set of uh, instructions and information in that particular paper. So now, uh, if uh, we throw our eyes on this um, screen, we see that uh, we have um, the instructions there uh, that runs from one up until, up until eight. So now remember, great talks in each and every question paper, regardless of uh, paper one or paper two, uh, you always um, chase for 150 marks. And um, we have se three sections uh, for each and every paper. So now we have section A. In most cases, this section A, it is compulsory. Uh, it uh, carries 30 marks. And we also have section B. Section B uh, comprises of uh, three questions of which the expectation is to select only uh, two questions that you feel comfortable with, right? So now moving on to section C. Section C, in most cases, uh, you are given uh, two questions and the expectation is to choose only one question. Okay, so now let's check the, the allocation of marks uh, per section. So now section A, uh, you fight for 30 marks and section B, each question carries 40 marks. So all in all, under section B, you buy, be fighting for 80 marks. So now, then the last section, uh, which is section uh, C, each uh, question carries uh, 40 marks, of which the expectation is only to select um, one question. So now, if you add uh, all of them, then they will sum up to 150. So now, great talks, bear in mind that um, uh, following uh, the instructions or the information, it is part of the examination. So make sure that you make it a norm or you make it a culture to always follow the given set of instructions. Because the moment you, you fail to follow the instructions, then you have actually failed before you can uh, start your uh, paper or the examination. Okay, right. So now let's check um, question one. Let's check question one. Question one under section A. So now uh, we have 30 marks. And the time allocated to go through this or to complete this section uh, is 20 minutes. And make sure that you run for that 20 minutes whenever you complete um, this uh, question. Because the moment you fail to go through uh, this question within the stipulated or given or scheduled time, in that regard, it means that you are going to uh, battle uh, to, to finish up um, the paper. Okay, right. So now question one, in particular 1.1, it reads as follows. Various options are provided as possible answers to the following questions. Choose the correct answer and write only the letter. In the bracket, you've actually been shown 
uh, as an example that uh, the options that will be given uh, will be given option A, B, C, up to up to D. So now, also, if you check there, you are given uh, an example on how to answer um, this section in a perfect manner. Okay, right. So now, let's start the work now. 1.1.1. 1. 1. 1. It reads as follows. Which of the following is a real flow in the product market? So now remember grade 12, before you can actually uh, jump on to answers, you should always make sure that you understand the key concepts given in a, in a question. Also, you must check the action verbs that have been used in that particular question. So now if we check this um, question, we have real flow as well as the uh, product market. Okay, so now if you still remember the real flow and the product market, if you, you draw a bigger picture, these uh, concepts, they fall under the circular flow model. What is this circular flow model? Then we shall discuss that um, as time lapses. So now let's check the real flow and also let's check the product market. When we talk of a word market, a word market is a platform where goods and services are being bought and sold. Why are we saying that a word market is a platform? Because uh, transactions can either be performed physically or electronically. So now that is why we're actually saying that um, a market is a platform. Okay, right. So now let's check uh, the product market. We have different set of uh, market or different types of market. If time allows, I'll actually go through them. But for now, since we don't have um, enough time, let's quickly uh, focus on the, on the type of the market that we're actually faced uh, with. We have product market. So product market is a platform where buying and selling of goods and services uh, do take place. That is the product market. Here we check the goods and services that are actually uh, being bought and, and sold. So now, so in a, in a, when we talk of the, the real flow, we have two types of flows. We have money flow as well as the, the real flow. So now under real flow, we check uh, the flow of goods and services. We check the flow of goods and services as well as the flow of vectors of production. While under, uh, under um, money flow, we check uh, the flow of expenditures or expenses as well as uh, the flow of um, income. Okay, right. So now, great jobs. In order for you to master this um, uh, kind of questions, you should always make sure that you uh, apply uh, the method or the strategy that is best. And of all the strategies up to this far, that I think I can work best for you, great jobs, so as to attain or achieve the higher mark is uh, when you apply the strategy that we call elimination method. Okay, right. So now this elimination method, what do we, we do? You normally compare compare the options given. And then the ones that you see that they are far from being correct, you cancel them out up until you are actually left with the one that you think uh, is uh, mostly correct. Okay, right. So now let's check option A. Option A, uh, we have the spending flow on goods and services from households to firms. It's out. So we cancel it, it's out. So now the second one, which is B, we have the flow of the vectors of production from household to firms. And then also this one is uh, totally out. So now let's check um, the next one, which is uh, uh, C, option C. Then it reads as follows. The income flow from firms to household through the vector market. Also this one uh, is out. So now it means that automatically we are now left with what? We've left with D. And that makes D our answer. The best answer is the flow of goods and services from firms to households. Remember I said that in order for you to master this, you should understand the concept. So now since the product market is the market uh, where, or is the platform where goods and services are being bought and sold. So in this regard, this calls for uh, D as the correct option uh, compared to other options. So now great terms, bear in mind that most of these answers, they are pretty uh, close to one another. That is why you should always uh, take into account uh, the best strategy that you can actually apply so as to um, get to the correct answer. Okay, right, great terms. So now we are actually saying that the perfect answer in this regard is, um, the perfect answer in this regard, we are saying that our perfect answer is um, D.
So now we said that our appropriate answer is going to be uh, D. Okay, right. So now moving on to the uh, next question, which is 1.1.2. It reads um, as follow. The dash is caused by changes in the building and construction industry. So now if you check um, the, the, the key concept in this uh, question, we have uh, what we have construction industry. And what is this industry? Industry here, we refer to a group of firms that sell the same product or group of firms that sell the same goods as well as um, services. So now if we check here, we have um different set of what uh, different set of or different types of business cycles. So now um you should always understand the meaning of uh, that business cycles. And before you, uh, before you can actually jump onto answers, as well, you should always make sure that um, you know uh, the concept uh, when uh, you read uh, the question. Okay, right. So now uh, the appropriate answer for this one, we have um, C. C is our appropriate answer. Guys, remember uh, the types of business cycles, they normally depend on the uh, number of years that um, the, the business or, or the, the economic activities normally fluctuate. So now, let me take you to these business cycles. What do we mean by word or a phrase business cycles? Business cycles, we refer to fluctuations of the economic activities. So now these economic activities, uh, we check uh, how long can they actually uh, fluctuate. So now in this regard, our appropriate answer is going to be C. Okay, right, grade 12. So now let's move on to the next question. The next question that we have in hand, we have 1.1.3. 1. Uh, 1. Um, uh, so now 1.1.3 1. 1. Uh, reads as follows. The South African Reserve Bank uses DASH as an instrument to maintain uh, price stability. So it means that now the moment they are talking of, the, of our South African Reserve Bank, you should take into account um, that um, South African Bank it uses uh, which policy and under which policy, which instrument best uh, works for, uh, for, for, for South African Reserve Bank so as to stimulate the flow of goods and, and services. Guys, remember, if you take into account, most of the policies, they are needed uh, because um, they, they will be a fluctuations of the uh, economic um, activities. So now once there are fluctuations of the economic activities, it's either the government uh, can come into play to stimulate using the policy that is we call fiscal policy and the instruments that they normally use there, they use taxation as well as the government spending. But now when it comes to South African Reserve Bank, we know that this is uh, a reserve bank and reserve bank normally uh, it uses um, uh, the policy that we call monetary policy and this monetary policy uses a um, uh, different set of instruments and the instruments that uh, they normally use, they use money supply as well as the um, interest rate. So now remember, it will depend uh, whether the economy has landed at uh, growth or it has landed at boom. So now uh, that is why now they will check uh, which uh, instrument uh, should be uh, what uh, much lessened and which instrument should actually uh, uh, be uh, mostly applied. Okay, right. So now, as I said earlier, that you should always make sure that uh, uh, you want to use the elimination method whenever you are answering the questions under business studies. So now, if we check um, the given set of options, A is out, B is correct, C is out, D is out. So now, our appropriate answer in this regard is going to be um, option B. Okay, right, grade 12. So now, let's move on to the next option or the next question. The next question, we have 1.1.4. 1.1.4 reads as follows. Uh, reserve assets are recorded in the dash. So now let's talk of the word assets and let's talk of uh, the word reserve. So now reserve, it means that you actually put aside, you don't actually use that assets at a moment. So now what do we mean by the assets? When you talk of the assets, we refer to possessions of the economy or possessions of the uh, business. So now remember these assets, they can either be the assets of a long term as well as the assets of a short term. So now the assets of a long term, in this regard, it can actually involve um, machinery, it can involve fitting and um, machinery as well, and as well as um, the buildings, uh, the motor vehicles, and the likes. So now when it comes to the current ones, meaning the current ones are they are the assets that can be possessed 
or that can be owned within uh, a short period of time. So now these assets that we call them current, it means that we can actually say that uh, debtors, we call them what we call them um, in the current assets. Because when you ref we refer to debtors, we refer to those are people who normally uh, owe the business. Even though they owe us, they haven't paid the business. That money belongs to the business. They can pay that money within any, any, any short uh, period of time. So now, um, uh, great talks. Remember when we talk of um, uh, uh, what when you talk of the recording, we record. What do we record? Actually, we record the transactions. So now these transactions, uh, we check the transactions that are international. Meaning, we check um, uh, the flow of goods and services uh, between the countries, which is a what, which is a, which can actually be uh, classified as a bilateral trade. So now also we can actually record the transactions that take place amongst different set of uh, countries. And in that regard, that particular type of trade, we call it multilateral trade. Okay, right. So now the recording here of the reserve assets, um, they can actually be recorded under financial account, yes. And then we check B current account, no. Then we check C capital transfer account, no. Then we check D gold account, no. So now it means that this one of um, financial account is the one that is um, appropriate. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to 1.1.5. 1.1.5 reads as follows. The value of goods and services produced by a country during a financial year. During a financial year is known as dash um, income. So now if we check, if we check uh, the, the options given, remember, great talks, I always tell you that uh, you should always apply uh, elimination method or elimination strategy uh, whenever you are dealing with um, uh, the questions uh, that are uh, in a multiple choice form. Okay, right. So now if we check here, domestic income, domestic income uh, 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 is total out, money income is total out, but the correct option is um, national income because also the government uh, is um, totally out. So great talks, remember I told you that this... Um, uh, options given in most cases they're pretty uh, similar or pretty close to one another and you should always make sure that you are careful whenever uh, you attempt them okay right so now let's move on to uh, the next question and this next question we have um 1.1.6 uh, so now 1.1.6 reads as follows which of the following is the responsibility of the local government so now Local government. What do we mean by local government? And why, why in actually do we have local government? It means if you have local government, we still have other types of the, of the government. And what do we mean by a word, government? When we talk of the government, we normally refer to bodies uh, that uh, uh, provide uh, the economy with public um, goods. Remember, public goods, in most cases, they don't have a price. They are free. They are free goods. In most cases, they are free goods. Um, unlike um, economic goods, where they normally have a price on them. So now let's check a uh, different classification of the government. We have um, national government. National government is, is where now we refer to those uh, guys in the parliament. And also we have uh, the provincial government. Provincial government is where now we can uh, refer to MECs. And uh, also, uh, lastly, we have the local government. This one of local government takes into account the municipal Ladies. Okay, right. So now, great jobs. Let's check uh, the options given. The first option given, we have street life. That one is the correct one. Then we have education. Education is far. And then we have army. Army is far. Then we, we have car license. Car license is far. So it means that now, in this regard, our correct answer, it is um, going to be A. Okay. Now, moving on to uh, the next question, which is 1.1.7. 1.1.7 um, reads as follows. An increase in taxes will cause a decrease in debt. What do we mean by a tax? When we talk of a tax, we talk of a levy or a charge that uh, the government normally apply on uh, uh, individual income or on business um, income, or uh, they normally uh, charge or it's a levy on um, the investment uh, that um, actually into, into place. Okay, right. So now let's check um, the options uh, given. Okay, remember before we can actually go to the options given, 
this uh, text, we have different classification of tax. So now this tax, uh, if we have uh, what we have income tax. Income tax is the levy on what on uh, individual income and also individual income. And we also have what we also have um, company tax. And this company tax, it is actually a levy on business uh, profits. Okay, right. So now also we should be in, in position to know the, 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 the type of tax that is actually being applicable or used here in South Africa. Here in South Africa, the type of tax that they use, they use what do you call progressive tax? So now this progressive tax, um, uh, it, it says what? Uh, it says the more you yen, the more you are taxed, or the lesser you yen, uh, the lesser you are taxed. So now remember, the major essence of the government to apply tax, because from the start I said that the government, in order for them to stimulate the flow of goods and services, they apply what you call a fiscal policy. And this fiscal policy, uh, it contains two instruments. One is what? One is taxes or taxation, and the other one is government um, uh, spending. So now, uh, these taxes, the government apply them whenever they want to stimulate uh, the flow of goods and, and services. So now, right, great jobs. So now, if we check them, they're saying that an increase in taxes will cause a decrease in this tax collection is how? Consumption, yes. Consumption, yes. It is correct. So now see government revenues out and uh, governmental expenditures out. Why are we saying that an increase in taxes will cause a decrease in consumption? It is because the moment the government uh, increases uh, the percentage of the tax on the, what, on the individual income, that is going to discourage the, the, what, the production of goods and services, meaning uh, these individuals, they are going to be discouraged to undertake work or to render services. Why? Because now they will actually be what? Sweating for, for nothing. They will sweat too much after sweating too much. Much of their monies or much of their income now is going to be taken by the government. But it is the good word. It is the good strategy for the government to do that. But it is not advisable for the government always to, uh, to put um, too much levy on what? On uh, individual, individual income. So let's check why is it so important for the government always to charge uh, this tax. It is so important because tax normally, it helps to, uh, to redistribute income from those who have a lot of uh, uh, wealth or, or money uh, towards um, those who are, who are poor, or those who don't have. So in this regard, it means that the government will tax those people who are having a lot of money or a lot of assets or those people who are wealthy, and then they are going to give to, uh, to the poor. How do they give to the poor? In most cases, they give to the poor uh, via what? via uh, capital transfer. Uh, so now this one of uh, capital transfer uh, or social grants, here we refer to social grants. Because remember, whenever we talk of a grant, a grant is the money that you receive without any, any, any job being done or any service actually being rendered. Okay, right. So now, as we said, great talks, the appropriate answer for this section is going to be, is going to be a B. Okay. Yes, I would love to go deeper or go more under this concept, but for the sake of time, great talks, um, we shall discuss it as time lapses. Okay, right. So now moving on to the next question, we have 1.1.8. So now 1.1.8 great talks reads as follows. Changes in, in terms of trade signal changes in the countries. So now let's check the terms of trade. What is this terms of trade? Terms of trade normally calls for what you call international trade. It means that here there is a flow or there are flows of goods and services between, uh, between countries or amongst uh, the countries. So now if we check here, we have A, which is prices, is out. We have inflation, is out. We have wealth, is out. But we have welfare. So in this regard, welfare, it is our appropriate answer for this um, question. Okay, right, grade 12. So now let's move on to the next question, grade 12. The next question that we are moving to, we are moving to 1.2. Uh, so now 1.2 reads as follows. Choose a description from column B that matches the item in column A. Write only a letter uh, in brackets. You actually give an example how you can best uh, approach this uh, particular type of questions. So now, grade 12, if you check this type of questions, they are somehow very tricky, even though they might look... Uh, easy into your eyes, but in actual fact, they are not that much um, easy. Okay, right. So now, um, let's check um, 
uh, the concept under column A. Column A, in most cases, you are given the concept. Uh, while in column B, in most cases, you can be given the features, the characteristics, or, or the definitions, or the explanations, and um, the likes. So it means that you should be in the position to understand the concept deeply, because the moment you don't understand the concept deeply, in that regard, it is going to what? It is going to show you flames. Okay, right. So now let's check 1.2.1. Uh, so we have Keynesian approach. So now, who is this Keynesian? This, this Keynesian, a Keynesian is the name of a person. And why are we saying the approach? It means it is his understanding towards um, the economics, because uh, Kratos, uh, we have different set of um, theories and uh, economics. It means that um, uh, we have different uh, views when we, 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 we deal with economics. That is why our founder of economics, uh, our father, which is Adam Smith, um, this father uh, for us, him as well, uh, he does um, uh, tolerate what? Tolerate different set of approaches. Remember, Keynesian did approach uh, or did um, give out his side of um, view or the story when it comes to the fluctuations of economic um, activities. So he is saying that if you want to avoid the fluctuations of economic activities, the market forces of demand and supply will make the economy to stabilize. We don't need the government. We don't need the government. And according to his approach, he's saying that in most cases, governments have the same what? Have the same surname, which is corruption. So that is why he's saying that no. Whether uh, the economy is at boom or the economy is at draws, meaning when the economy is at boom, it means that economic activities are doing very, very well. There is full employment. Many of the resources are being used. There's no, uh, what, there's no waste of resources, meaning there is efficiency or resources are actually are being used um, efficiently. So now this guy, Keynesian, is saying that, no, we don't need government to step in when it comes to uh, the flow of goods and services or when it comes to uh, the performance of the economic activities. So now, um, if we check uh, the appropriate answer for this that is in line with um, uh, Mr. Keynesian's approach is E. That says, a school of thought which believes the economy is best controlled by market forces. Which market forces? These market forces that we are referring to, we are referring to uh, the level of demand and supply. What is demand and what is supply? When we talk of demand, we talk of the willingness and ability to buy goods and services. Then uh, when it comes to supply, supply we refer to what? We refer to um, the ability and willingness of businesses to sell goods and services. So meaning our appropriate answer in this regard, it is going to be A, meaning E here is our appropriate answer. Okay, right. <clears throat> so now guys, uh, let's check um, our, our 1.2.2, the amplitude. So now what, what do we mean by, by, by this um, amplitude? When we talk of the amplitude, remember the amplitude it does uh, measure what it does measure the distance uh, from trough to trough and peak to peak. So now uh, we must check um, the appropriate answer uh, that uh, is in line with with that. This is just a measure. It is a measure. It's a tool that uh, is actually being applied whenever they measure the flow of goods and services, or whenever they measure uh, they measure actually um, the performance of the economic activities. So in this regard, our appropriate answer is going to be D. It measures the severity of the uh, cyclical uh, fluctuations. So in this regard, it means that our appropriate answer is going to be, our appropriate answer is going to be um, D. Okay, right. So now moving on to the next question, we have boom. What is this boom? Boom is a turning point of the business cycle. And this turning point of the business cycle, it does indicate that economic activities are performing very well. They are, there is no wastage of resources. Resources are efficiently been utilized or resources are efficiently have been actually uh, used. So now this, it means that in that particular economy, if um, the economy, economic activities are at boom, that is the indication that there is full employment, full employment of resources. 
People are working. Businesses are making profit. The government is able uh, to collect enough tax. And then people also, they are able to buy goods and services because the purchasing power is allowing them to, what, to buy whatsoever they desire with um, the money that they actually earn. So now the economic activities, they are not limited to what I actually mentioned. But for the sake of time, um, let me actually um, move on. So now our appropriate answer in this regard, we have, um, we have C. So the C uh, that says uh, a period of a rapid economic expansion, we have, um, we have um, C. So meaning here, our appropriate answer is going to be C. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to the next question. The next question we have what? We have um, treasure bill, treasury, treasury uh, bills. So now what are these uh, treasury bills? Treasury bills, uh, normally, we refer to what we refer to uh, short-term uh, debt obligations that are normally inconsistent with um, the central government or the national government. So, I meaning in this regard, our appropriate answer, if we check there, it is what it is. Um, a meaning A in this regard is our appropriate answer. Okay, great talk. Thanks. So now let's move on to uh, the next word, the next question. So now we have balance of uh, trade. So now the balance of trade here. What do we mean uh, by this um, uh, balance uh, of trade? So now, the balance of trade that we are referring to, we check uh, the difference in value between a country's imports and exports of goods and services. Meaning this balance of trade, it does what? It does uh, record the transaction uh, pertaining to imports as well as exports. What do we mean by imports and what do we mean by exports? When we talk of the imports, we refer to goods and services that have been bought from other countries by local firms or local businesses or our local government. Then when it comes to the exports, exports, we refer to goods and services that are locally produced and they're actually being sold to the rest of the, of the world. So now in this regard, our appropriate answer is going to be, is going to be H. Okay, right, great talks. Thank you very much uh, for understanding and listening uh, and taking me up to this far. Okay, right. So now let's move on to 1.2.6. 1.2.6 reads as follows. Current prices. What are these um, uh, current prices? So now when we talk of the current prices, in most cases, we check the actual values of goods and, um, and services. We check the current. What is this current? That's what we check. We check the actual one, the actual values of goods and um, uh, services. So now let's check the appropriate answer for this. So now if we lay our eyes on, on that uh, column B, we have what? We have F as our appropriate answer. So meaning in this regard, F is our appropriate answer. Okay, right. So now let's move on to uh, 1.2.7. 1.2.7 uh, says non-extrudability. So non-extrudability, this concept calls for what we call a public good. Remember, a public good, we said that the public good is a free good that can be used by anyone. And this public good that can be consumed by anyone. You can't, you can't exclude someone from using it. You can't stop someone from using it. That is why we are saying that there are non excludability everyone can use the public good everyone can utilize a public good whether you are a foreigner or you are a citizen if there are parks there you can't say that in this park foreigners shouldn't come and sit in this park no why because it's a public good it's a free good that can be utilized by everyone now also let's check the tar roads tar roads also is a public good so you can't say that the, the motor vehicle for foreigners shouldn't use a certain tar road no you can't exclude them so also we can talk of the street lights. You can't say that uh, since you're a foreigner, well, I shouldn't use these street lights. No, you can't exclude them. And we have different set of what examples under uh, this public good. And then uh, you can't exclude uh, someone uh, from using or utilizing such um, and such are commodities. Why? Because they are public ones. They are free. They don't have a price, just like economic um, goods. So now, in this regard, our um, appropriate answer, if we check our appropriate answer, our appropriate answer is I. I, it is almost impossible to prohibit any person from using the good. So meaning, in this regard, our appropriate answer 
is going to be is going to be i. Okay, right, grade 12. So now let's move on to the next question. The next question we have 1.2.8 that um, addresses the issue of globalization. What do you mean by globalization? Globalization is a linkage of what? It's a linkage of different set of countries uh, coming together to perform a certain activity. And make an example of this. Uh, different set of uh, countries can come together to, uh, to celebrate uh, World AIDS Day. World AIDS Day, then the moment they come together, then uh, that activity, we call it what? We call it um, globalization. Also, if they come to play Olympic Games, uh, then also in that regard, we call it globalization. And also, if uh, we have our Soccer World Cup, also Soccer World Cup can be classified as an activity that calls for globalization. So now let's check um, the appropriate answer for our 1.2.8. Our appropriate answer is G. That is as for increasing uh, integration of economies around the world. So meaning here, in this regard, our appropriate answer is going to be uh, G. Okay, right, great talks. So now we are done with this uh, question. Let's move on to uh, the next question. So now the next question, uh, we, we are moving on to 1.3. 1.3 of all questions, it is somehow very tricky. How, why are we saying 1.3 somehow it is very tricky? It is very tricky because it needs you to understand the content of economics. It needs you to have uh, the content of economics. If you are used, you are used to memorizing concepts, when it comes to this question, it is not easy to master all of all of them uh, if uh, you are not well equipped um, with um, uh, the concepts. Okay, right. So now um, let's check um, the question. Give one term for each of the following descriptions. Write only the term next to the question number. Uh, an example is given there. So uh, we have 1.3.1 1 to 1.3.6 in the answer book. So abbreviations, agronomies, and examples will not be accepted. So it means that what they are saying, uh, you shouldn't write GDP. GDP, if you write GDP, uh, I put a cross. I don't even uh, put a half. I put a cross. Why a cross? Because uh, it is specified amongst a set of instructions that um, you shouldn't um, uh, write abbreviations. But you rather say cross domestic um, uh, product. Okay, right. Great talk. So now let's move on to 1.3.1. 1.3.1 reads as follows. A reporting tool prescribed by the United Nations uh, for countries to compile cross domestic product figures. Uh, this calls for systems of uh, national accounts. Systems, systems of national account. Systems of national account account. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to the next question, which is 1.3.2. 1.3.2 reads as follows. The type of business cycle where nominal GDP is adjusted for inflation. So now if nominal GDP it is adjusted for inflation, nominal we check the current one. So the moment uh, inflation is being adjusted, it means that calls for the real what? The real GDP. So meaning in this regard we are going to have a real Real business cycles. Real business cycle. Okay, right. So now, great terms. Let's move on to the next question. Is one point three point three. One point three point three reads as follows: Payments by the government to suppliers that reduce their cost. Payments by the government to suppliers that reduce their costs. Mm, reduce their costs. Yes. So it means that this payment also it should benefit uh, consumers. It should benefit those who buy goods and services. And uh, if we call, if we check into account, uh, uh, the the business should always make sure that they minimize what they minimize the cost. And then the government can also chip in to say that okay, guys, uh, since um, you are supposed to spend this much, but on behalf of consumers, let us pay this amount. So it means that this question calls for what we call a subsidy. What is a subsidy? A subsidy is a set of amount that the government pays to producers or suppliers or sellers of goods and services on behalf of the customers. So meaning in this regard, our appropriate answer is going to be subsidies.
Okay, right. I already explained uh, uh, what is um, the subsidies. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to the next question. The next question, we have 1.3.4. 1.3.4 reads as follow. The ability of the country to produce greater quantity of um, a good or service with the same quantity of inputs um, per unit of um, uh, time. So now remember, we have different set of uh, what? Uh, uh, we have absolute advantage, comparative. So in this regard, our appropriate answer is going to be absolute advantage. Absorb, load, advantage. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to the next question. The next question says, uh, state-owned enterprises that um, uh, provide public goods and services. In most cases, state-owned, yeah, we refer to what? We refer to those um, uh, businesses where the government has some shares in them, where the government has some part of our uh, ownership in them. And in, in economic terms, such a businesses, we call them parastatals. Call them parastatals. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to the next question, which is 1.3.6. 1.3.6 reads as follows. The flow of income and expenditure between the participants in the economy, the flow of income uh, between uh, the participants in the economy. So now uh, the flow, remember, uh, I did explain, well, it was it a question one, different set of flows. And I said that these flows normally, uh, there are two. We have what we have, real flow as well as the uh, what um, money flow. And I said under real flow, we check the flow of goods and services as well as the flow of vectors of production. And we also have what we call money flow. Money flow, we check the flow of what? So we check the flow of income as well as the flow of uh, expenditure or expenses. So now the appropriate answer for this question is going to be money flow. And remember, great talks, this money flow, um, uh, it does what? It does take the, the insight whenever you are drawing your what? Your uh, secular flow model. And the outside part of it, uh, that's where now we go to what we call the real flow. So now as time lapses, when we get to such question, if any, in this question paper, then I will explain it um, further. Okay, right, great talks. So now in this regard, we are done with our section. And then we have seen how best you can answer these questions. Remember, time uh, is always very important. And you should always respect it. The time that is allocated in answering any set of questions, make sure that you utilize it. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to the next question, great talks. So next question, great talks, uh, we have section B. So section B, um, in, in, in section B, remember you are given uh, what you are given uh, two, uh, two, I mean, you are given three questions and the expectation is to select a uh, two. So now, okay, so let's check um, what we have uh, in store. So we have 2.1. So 2.1 under question two says, answer different questions. So now we have 2.1.1. So 2.1.1 reads as follows. Name two features of the expansionary phase in the, in the business cycles. So now, um, what do we mean by, by expansionary phase? So now guys, uh, and this expansionary phase, it means expansionary phase, now the economy is taking off from the trough. It is now taking off from performing poor. The activity, economic activities have been performing poor. Now they are what? They are taking off from performing poor towards uh, performing better or towards um, uh, performing uh, towards um, the boom. Okay, right, great talks. So now here what um, we know here, the features can be an increase in, B, in what? In GDP or gross um, domestic uh, product. Increase. Same that here, increase in gross domestic product. What are these, what, what do you mean by this gross domestic product? Now this is the second time coming across this uh, uh, phrase or this uh, abbreviation, sorry. Um, what does it mean? It, it means gross domestic product. Gross domestic product, we check what, we check, um, uh, the total monetary value of goods and services that have been produced within borders of a certain country, then usually we check the time period of uh, a year. Okay, right. So now again, we can we can say what uh, we can also say we have an increase 
in spending. But if you check, the question says that we should only give um, one point, and of which that um, uh, one point, um, it does what? It does um, call for, uh, for two marks. So, so now let's check. So also here we can say that we have what? We have inflation increase. Inflation increase. Okay, right, grade 12. What do we mean by inflation? And inflation, we refer to a persistent or continuous increase in the general price level of goods and um, services. Okay, right, grade 12. So now let's move on to the next question. The next question reads as follows. Why is uh, uh, parliamentary uh, questioning on the main um, budget uh, import so important? It is so important because it helps improve um, government policies uh, legislation and public um, services. We are saying that this is important because it helps. It helps improve. It helps to improve government policies or governmental policies. Government policies. Legislations and public services. Okay, great talks. Thank you very much. Now let's move on to uh, the next question, which is question uh, 2.2. So question 2.2 um, reads um, as follows. Study the diagram below and answer the questions that follow. So this is an example of a circular flow model. So circular flow model, if you check under circular flow model, uh, we have um, we have what we have um, vector market. Remember, I said the market is a platform where goods um, where, where goods and services are being bought and sold. That is a market. But now, when it comes to vector market, vector market it means now this is is a platform where vectors of production are being bought and so on. Which vectors of production are we actually referring to? We are referring to capital, meaning here capital is being what? Being sold and bought. Also, we refer to entrepreneurship. Also, we refer to um, land. Also, we refer to, to labor. And also, we have the households. What do we mean by household? Households, we refer to one person or group of individuals who are sharing the same um, living arrangement. So now here we have product market. Product market, remember, it's a platform where goods and services are being bought and sold. So here we have the firms. What do we mean by firms? Firms we refer to an entities that have that an entities that are uh, been established with the aim of um, making profit. So now uh, let's check um, the government. The government normally uh, we refer to we refer to bodies that normally provide with um, public good. Why am I saying bodies? Because the government comprises of different set of bodies. Under government, I know most of our uh, Ukraine talks, you think when you talk of the government, we only refer to politicians. Politicians, uh, they are one of the bodies that what form, what do you call the government? Meaning under government, number one, we have politicians. Number two, we have um, societies. We, have, we also have bureaucrats under, under government. They also take part as the government. But in most cases, because the politicians are the ones who are occupying the driver's seat of this vehicle or this um, government, we think that when we talk of the government, we refer to them. No, actually not. We have them set of bodies. Okay, let's check great top. So now we have financial institutions. <clears throat> financial institutions that we refer to, we refer to those um, institutions that are actually uh, our credit um, providers. So these ones, they are those ones who are dealing with money. These are the businesses um, uh, or institutions that deal with um, money, such as banks and um, uh, the likes, the insurances and um, the like. Okay, right. So now, great talks. Um, let's, as I said earlier, that um, when when we talk of this, um, when we talk of um, of, of of this um, uh, 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 what uh, circular flow model, and then I said the outside part represent the real flow, while the inside part the inside part um, represent what it represent um, the money flow. So now here, remember, uh, we are saying that the households they are the primary what they are the primary uh, participants under the circular flow model because they are the ones normally who are selling what who are selling um, 
uh, the vectors of production to businesses, so now businesses can be in the position to produce goods and, and services. So whenever the households sell their vectors of production to businesses, uh, businesses then in that regard, they are going to uh, they are going to reward or compensate the households with an income. Okay, right. So now let's um, move on uh, grade 12. So grade 12, uh, moving on, we have 2.2.1. So now 2.2.1 reads as follows. Identify the participant that uses the vectors of production to produce goods and services. Great to have, remember I said that whenever you're dealing with the questions under um, economics or under any, any, any paper, it, it can be economics, it can be business studies and the likes. Make sure when the question says identify, this action verb should be taken into account. The moment it says identify, the expectation is just to pick the answer from the given set of uh, diagram or to pick the answer from the given set of uh, cartoon or to pick the answer from the given set of a uh, scenario. So in this regard, our appropriate answer is going to be firms. Okay, right. So now let's move on to the next question. The next question, we have 2.2.2. So now 2.2.2 reads as follows. Uh, through which market uh, will goods and um, payment for goods and services uh, do flow. They do flow under that what we call the product market. Remember, I've already explained uh, uh, this um, product market. I said product market is a market where goods and services are being bought and sold. Okay, right. So now let's uh, move on to the next question, which is um, uh, 2.2.3. Briefly describe the term goods market. So now goods market, remember goods market uh, is more or less the same with the product market. So meaning here under goods market, we specifically refer to what? Refer to those tangible items that businesses are selling. So now here we talk of the platform where buyers and sellers of goods meet for potential transactions. So we here, uh, we're actually saying that uh, this is a platform, a platform, platform where buyers, and sellers of goods meet for potential transactions. Okay, right, great talks. So now let's move on to the next question. The next question we have um, uh, 2.2.4. And our 2.2.4 reads as follows. How does the government reuse economic activities in the secular flow? So remember, these economic activities and the economics, I told you that we check the, the level of employment, we also check if businesses are making profit, we also check the performance of the uh, what imports, also check the performance of the exports, also check the level of consumption by the household. Are they able to buy goods and services? Are they not poor? Are they poor? And um, the likes. Also check the different set of investments. Either it can be local investment or foreign investment. So those are the economic activities that you're actually referring to. So what about the secular flow? The secular flow, we check the flow of income, we also check the flow of what? Expenditures, we also check um, the flow of production. That is actually taking place amongst uh, the different set of market um, participants or decision makers. Okay, right. So now in this regard, um, the question wants us to, to, what, to check or take into account how the government reuse economic activities in the circular flow model. So in this regard, um, the government normally, um, they put what you call uh, the surplus that will lead to less spending in the economy. So now here we're saying that uh, the government, the government budget surplus that will lead to lose spending in the economy. In the 
economy. Okay, right, good talks. So now at this uh, Janja, uh, we have actually pushed. So now let's move on to 2.2.5. 2.2.5 uh, reads as follows. Explain the impact on the circular flow if leakages are greater than injections. What do we mean by leakages? When we talk of the leakages, we check uh, the goods and services or we check uh, the outflow of money, the outflow of money, the money that um, goes out of the, uh, the pool of collection. Then when we talk of the injections, we check um, the inflow of money or the money that comes into the economy. Okay, right. So now um, the question says what uh, we want um, to give the impact. So now if the question says impact, let's remember we can either uh, take into account the bad side or the, the good side. So now here the max allocation is four. It means that uh, the expectation is to come up with two points. So now leakages reduce the flow of income in an economy. Why are we saying that? Because when you talk of the leakages, we refer to uh, the flow of money uh, that is going out of the economy. Meaning leakages, we refer to what? Outflow of money. That is why we are saying that leakages reduce the flow of income in an economy. Leakages, leakages reduce the flow of income in an economy. Okay, right. So now, since we have our uh, four marks, the expectation is to come up with um, how many marks? How many points? Two points. So now, also, we can say there will be less funds available for economy, economic activities, which um, leads to national income decreasing. What do you mean by national income? That is an income for the country. So now we are saying that there will be There will be less funds available for economic activities which leads to national income decrease. Okay, great talk. So now we are done with um, <clears throat> 2.5. 2. So now let's move on to the next question. And the next question that we are faced with, we are faced with um, uh, question 2.3. Um, uh, oh, so now question 2.3, I love it with all my heart. Because um, it addresses um, the issue of what we call forex. So study um, the graph below and answer the questions uh, that um, follow. So now, guys, remember, you, you should be in the position to understand the graph. You should, the, the language should always be clear. So now, in this regard, when we talk of the exchange rate, exchange rate, we check uh, what we check the matching of different set of uh, currencies. So now, in this regard, it means that now, uh, a rent is actually being merged with a, with a dollar. So now if a rent is being merged with a dollar, uh, then uh, we can actually uh, read and understand uh, the questions um, that follow. So now if we check, um, uh, we have uh, what we have um, a different set of diagrams there or different set of caves. So now this cave, this one that is um, upward sloping, it's a supply cave. And why is the supply curve upward sloping? The supply curve is upward sloping, sloping because it obeys the law of supply. What does the law of supply uh, state? The law of supply states that um, the higher the price and then also uh, the higher the quantity. That's the law of um, supply. But now uh, this diagram, I mean, or this graph that is facing down, we call it demand curve. And then the demand curve uh, is downward sloping. Why is it downward sloping? Because there is uh, what an inverse relationship between uh, demand and um, the price. So meaning here, uh, if the prices uh, of goods and services or the prices of a dollar is, is high, then it means um, uh, the quantity is going to be low. 
But if the price is low, then uh, the quantity is going to be high, unlike the supply. The supply, if the price is high, also the quantity is going to be very high according to the law. Okay. Okay, right. Surely, grade 12, you did understand me very well when I was addressing these laws because I know most of you grade 12s, uh, you, you, you normally miss a point because you don't understand how this um, uh, concept normally uh, flow or operate. So I said that the supply curve 